incident happened this past weekend. Police were able to track the victim to a home in Arab where they found him still handcuffed and sitting on a couch. 21-year-old Jesse Fane Jr. and 18-year-old Clayton Callahan have since been arrested. The police chief in the city of Florence is retiring after 12 years at that position. Chief Ron Tyler turned in his resignation letter on Monday and set his last day within the department for June 28th. I'm Andrea Tice. For more news affecting Alabamians, go to 1819news.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the daily newsletter. Hello to all my friends in the great state of Alabama. This is Lee Greenwood, and I'm deeply honored to extend my wholehearted endorsement to a true American patriot, Dick Brubaker, for Congress. His proven track record of principled advocacy, effective leadership, and dedicated public service guarantees that he will always stand firm in defense of our rights, our values, and our future. God bless you in Alabama, and God bless the USA. I'm Dick Brubaker, and I approve this ad. Reward yourself and your home with beautiful new flooring from Georgia Floors Direct. Since 1969, GFD has guaranteed the lowest prices on the largest inventory of all types of flooring. Visit or call today Georgia Floors Direct, Eastern Boulevard, across from Lowe's. The views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management, staff, or any advertisers. For Montgomery's conversational radio show, it's News and Views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. Hey, Nick. I don't mean to be telling tales out of school, but there's a fella in there who'll pay you $10 if you sing into his can. I'm not here to make a record, you dumb cracker. It broadcast me out on the radio. Joey Clark. Welcome. Into news and views in the afternoon, or as we're calling it on the interwebs, Joey Clark Live. Hope everybody's doing all right on a lovely Tuesday. A special runoff election day here in Montgomery. For the brand new Alabama Congressional District 2, I've already done my due diligence and went and voted with my grandfather at my side this morning. And it's really just that one race, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, uh, you've got a choice today. And the runoff, low turnout expected, so your vote actually could make somewhat of a difference here at this time. Now, without further ado, plenty to get to with this gentleman today. We have the one, the only Judge Andrew Napolitano on the stream. Judge, how are you? I'm well, Joey. How are you, my dear friend? I'm doing quite well, and uh, well, I want to start with what we're seeing play out in the courtroom as we speak. It, it just broke that uh, Mr. Bragg is trying to trigger the gag order against Trump and wanting him to be held in contempt. What's going on here? Well, the uh, judge in the case entered uh, two gag orders, the second of which protects the judge's daughter. I've been critical of this. Um, arguing that the application for this gag order should have gone to another judge. It's unseemly for a judicial uh, official to be entering an order protecting his family member. He has an interest in the outcome. She's not a minor. She doesn't live in his house. She's in independently uh, employed. Nevertheless, she's still his daughter. However, it's a gag order. It's been appealed. It was upheld uh, on appeal, and Trump apparently violated it uh by uh, being critical of her he also violated the first gag order by being harshly critical of michael cohen hmm. uh one of the principal witnesses against him Is so one side of this says gag orders are unconstitutional because they infringe upon the freedom of speech the other side of this says uh witnesses and jurors people not accustomed to the uh, public spotlight need to be protected and can't be intimidated by criminal defendants against whom uh, they are going to testify or whom they're going to judge, witness or juror. So that's where this stands. Uh, I don't know what the judge is going to do. I mean, fining Trump, unless it's an enormous fine, right. it's not going to dent him. The judge threatened to incarcerate him yesterday, so we'll see what happens. That's also a, a chaotic mess, trying to incarcerate somebody who has Secret Service protection. I don't mean to laugh at it. It's just... Uh, uh it's it's virgin territory yeah describe it and like i was telling you last week or, or the week before it all kind of blurs together 
I think this country would go crazy at that of you know I I would take certain other of these cases in front of uh, Trump as the election cycles ahead more seriously you should take this seriously given it's in criminal trial right now but if they threw him in jail over this particular case with these characters like Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen I think this country comes unhinged and I wanted to ask about Cohen how can anybody believe a thing that man says at that point he's been on every side of the truth it seems like well it's uh, it's up to trump's lawyers uh, one of whom is a very experienced trial lawyer uh, to uh, cross-examine cohen on the basis of prior inconsistent statements and prior admissions uh of uh deception uh there there's an old one-liner that prosecutors use even liars can tell the truth <laughs> <laughs> and and the government can't pick its witnesses. You know, it takes its witnesses as as they come to it in the case. And often the government's witnesses in criminal cases are not exactly people you would invite into your living room. This that's this, this case is no different. Uh, the government knows how to bolster his uh, credibility and defense counsel knows how to attack it. It's up to the jury to decide whether or not they believe it. Some of the events in this case are really not disputed. The uh, right. bookkeeping records speak for themselves. What is disputed, I suppose, is Trump's intent. This is a crime of intent. The government has to prove intent, um, which it, it proves by the circumstances surrounding the defendant's behavior. And those circumstances were observed by, among others, Michael Cohen. Man, and now I, I want to shift gears here because we'll see how this particular case continues. And uh, there's a lot going on. The country coming apart at the seams in many ways. Uh, I know you've been highly critical of Speaker Mike Johnson, and I think I uh, agree with you, rightfully so. Critical. One guy I'd imagine we both respect in the Congress very much, Thomas Massey, has now come out today saying he would join uh, second Marjorie Taylor Greene and ousting Johnson. Uh, let's remind folks why we might be so critical and so disappointed in this brand new speaker who might not be speaker for much longer. He uh, pushed through a budget that spends more uh, spends and borrows more money than Mrs. Pelosi's last budget. Uh, he broke the tie on a very reasonable uh, amendment to restrain uh, FBI, NSA, and CIA spying by the very by requiring something novel that they get a warrant before they spy on Americans. The, the vote was 212 to 212. He left the speaker's chair to break the tie. Now he's going to orchestrate aid uh, to Ukraine, which at last count is confronting massive desertions. Mm. Even these Nazi units where the, where the guys have swastikas tattooed on their arms and they're supposedly the fiercest fighters uh, Ukraine has, have been uh, deserting where they get better uh, food, better uh, medical attention, and better creature comforts at the hands of their Russian captors than they do in their own uh, army. So Mike Johnson has been an enormous, enormous uh, disappointment, um, worse than Kevin uh, McCarthy, worse than Mrs. Pelosi. Now, I say that with a little bit of bias because uh, Thomas Massey is the Ron Paul of the House of Representatives. He is a superstar in my book because of his devotion to the Constitution. One more vote, one more Republican, and uh, Johnson's out. They only have a two-vote majority now unless Democrats start to vote for him, which, of course, causes another host of uh, problems that he'll have to deal with. And it does seem like the issues, the very important ones we care about, somewhat get lost in all the uh, fights between personalities, but you got to go uh, with both. And just circling back and underlining this, uh, FISA fight. Uh, you would have talked about this many times, but last week in your op-ed, you talked about in the midst of this conversation about FISA, the CIA was asking, the agency was asking for more power? Yes. So, so I'll tell you how it works. Section 702 is the section of the FISA Act that permits um, uh, surveillance on foreign persons in the U.S. and outside the U.S. without a warrant. This is totally unconstitutional because it presumes that the Fourth Amendment only protects Americans. It protects people. Okay. The argument was these people are bringing drugs into the country. They're terrorists. Uh, we don't even know who they are. We have to be able to surveil them. I get that. I don't agree with it, but I get it. All right. 
The statute, Section 702, also permits the FBI to spy on the Americans with whom foreign people speak. I call my cousins in Florence. I call a bookseller in London. I'm fair game for the FBI. It's absurd. The Andy Biggs, Thomas Massey amendment would have required, wouldn't have interfered with their spying on the foreign people, but it would have required a warrant to spy on me. The CIA wants to move two hops from me, meaning they want to be able to spy on whoever I talk to, American, and whoever that person talks to, American, without a search warrant. That passed. So the spying authority under Mike Johnson, actually, now the Senate hasn't ruled on this, but the right. exception of Rand Paul and Mike Leather and Bernie Sanders, they're all, and, and Elizabeth Warren, they're all big government spies over there. This actually enhances spying. This request was made by the CIA, and it's, it's a head scratcher. The charter of the CIA prohibits it, A, being involved in law enforcement, and B, spying on Americans. They've totally abandoned the charter. Congress has totally abandoned it. And it before he died, uh, Harry Truman wrote an op-ed in the, Wall in the Washington Post condemning what the CIA had become. He, he created it. Well, and they must be showing because Johnson did one of these uh, moments where a reporter catches him in the hallway. And he said, you know, I was on the Judicial Committee and I was all for getting rid of FISA. And then they showed me the very classified intelligence briefings being speaker. And I've kind of changed my mind. It makes me wonder what they show these folks in the back room. This goes all the way up to the conversation we've had you know, with Trump, with JFK and the files still surrounding Correct. Kennedy's assassination, Correct. seems like folks go in with the best of intentions and something is shown to them in the back room. The intelligence community has totally co-opted its regulators. You, you've heard the phrase regulatory capture. Yeah. This is what happens when uh, bankers at a big name bank promise the regulators great jobs at the bank when they leave uh they being a regulator now they can't make that promise overt but they can with a wink and a nod and suddenly the regulators are almost working for the bankers that's basically what ha what has happened uh with the intelligence community mike johnson sees things that he can't tell the rest of us about what the hell kind of a democracy is that the intelligence community sees things they can't tell the rest of congress about what kind of a democracy uh is that we don't know the accuracy or authenticity of what they've shown. It could be a picture uh, of Mike Johnson that's embarrassing to him. Who knows what they showed him? This is right. not the way democracy uh, is supposed to work. I, I laugh when um, Mike Turner, who's the chair of the House Intelligence Committee, says we have to protect Americans from foreign spies. Good God. Who will protect Americans from the American spies that you, Mike Johnson, have unleashed? Yeah, again, folks, we're talking to Judge Andrew Napolitano. You can always go to JudgeNap.com or check out his podcast, Judging Freedom. I was watching Colonel McGregor live this morning. A great mm -hmm. interview that y'all can always go back. You don't have to necessarily watch live. They're up there on YouTube at Judging Freedom. That, that was the largest uh, live audience we've ever had. Yeah, it was uh, a great conversation today, especially some of the breaking stuff on Ukraine, given that's not in the headlines. A, a real quick, another congressional controversy that's come up. I saw Alabama's junior Senator Britt talking about this on Fox and Friends. I've seen John Kennedy, the senator, John Kennedy from Louisiana, talking about this at length. Is it a constitutional requirement for the Senate to actually take up articles of impeachment if they're transmitted from the House to the Senate? Or is that more one of these traditions that stood for a while, but it's really up to the members of the Congress and the members of the Senate to decide? B. 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 Uh, a, a senator can stand up and say to the chief justice or whoever's presiding at the impeachment, I don't know if the chief's going to preside because it's not the president being impeached. Uh, I move to uh, to dismiss the uh, charges and uh, majority can uh, can do so. I don't know what the two senators have said i'm going to guess that they can't stand mayorkas this is not an impeachable offense and i don't like mayorkas either but he hasn't committed an impeachable offense even if he did everything the house said he did this is a dispute over policy policy set by joe biden and the country is stuck with biden for at least the next uh, eight or nine uh months 
impeachment has to be treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors in the category of treason and bribery. They haven't even alleged that. Well, and this goes back to what the impeachment of Johnson, where you can't impeach for maladministration. It has to be those others you laid out. And well, and I believe the senators, including Katie Britt and John Kennedy and many others, are threading that needle that this is a very, uh, you know, great stalwart tradition in the Senate. How dare you do away with that? But on that point, you know, being a, a student of the Constitution that you are, how important are some of these norms that in my lifetime are more and more being upset? Is this a good development, bad development, kind of doesn't really matter in the long run? You're, what do you you're think about talking about, about the norm of accepting whatever impeachment articles come over or the norm of ignoring uh, the law? Of accepting uh, what articles come over, or there were others about, you know, how many do you need a filibuster proof majority in advance judges? These sorts of things continue to seem to be whittled away. Uh, are, I guess my general question is are some of these rules that have been developed in the Senate been held for a century or more? Uh, are is it should we be careful in the little c conservative well, sense of probably, upsetting these things we probably should be careful with the eradication of tradition because people come to rely on it you you comport your behavior in the house expect ex, even though i don't think this is an impeachable offense right that you comport your behavior in the house expecting the senate will follow its tradition rather than just dump this thing because they don't believe uh it's an impeachable uh offense traditions shouldn't be uh, easily uh, uh, vitiated, and they they shouldn't be vitiated in reverse. I Meaning, you, you can say, oh, "This is the last time we're going to do this." In the future, we're going to allow a motion uh, to dismiss. So, you guys and gals in the house, be aware of that. If you send us garbage, it's going to come right back to you. Well, and I also just want to end with a thank you. Uh, and I went, I played it on my show when it first came out, but you played for many of your guests on Judging Freedom coach as we call him uh u.s senator tommy tuberville oh um, he was terrific in questioning uh secretary austin terrific i've never met the coach and i'm dying to maybe you can arrange that sometime sure. but he was absolutely terrific my producer said to me judge do you know tommy tuberville and i said no he goes judge he sounds just like you where do you watch these questions boom they were very very direct uh questions should ukraine join nato can ukraine win and i don't think uh, Secretary Austin was expecting that. Well, he and, uh, flipped and called him general once to a four star who is now the Secretary of Defense. That's very flattering. Secretary, oh, absolutely. Secretary of Defense, you get like that. Four stars takes a lifetime to get. Well, and uh, I just I love it when worlds collide. So I'll try to make that connection happen there with uh, with Coach Tuberville. He was the Auburn football coach my freshman year there at Auburn. It was his last year. He doesn't like being reminded of that particular year. Not a great record. He left for a reason. That said, uh, he I think he's as a senator becoming better with time. Uh, he's yeah. starting to wake up to the games of Washington D.C. Yes, agreed, agreed on that, uh, my dear friend. Very much agreed. Well, and I always appreciate your time. Again, folks can always check out Judging Freedom. Who do you have coming up this week? Well, we've had a Scott Ritter yesterday, which was enormous. We've had uh, Colonel McGregor this morning, which was enormous. I have two of my military regulars this afternoon, uh, Karen Kwiatkowski and Matt Ho, each of whom just finished testifying before the uh, United Nations Security Council on the futility of uh, aid to uh, Iran. I have Anna Parampol, who is the wife of uh, Max Blumenthal and a, a, a brilliant and gifted journalist in her own right on this issue of is there moral equivalency between Israel destroying the uh, Iranian embassy in Damascus and uh, murdering two generals and Iran attacking only military targets in Israel. Uh, and then I have Professor Jeff Sachs, a long day for me. Uh, at five o'clock today uh, on how close Iran and Russia came to a negotiated settlement until the United States and Great Britain entered the picture. Well, I'd love our time together as always. I had one question just come up before you go. Um, I'm in a moment going to be interviewing Mike Termott. He's also running for the Libertarian Party's presidential nomination. We talked to Dr. Reckenwald uh, last week. But, you know, there's been talk of RFK Jr. seeking the Libertarian Party's nomination to get ballot access. Is that, as a Libertarian, 
Is that a palatable nominee, given everything we know about him being a Kennedy and whatnot? Well, I have to say, first of all, he's a friend of mine. And secondly, we have conferred a number of times. And thirdly, the answer to your question is no. Mm. He is not palatable <laughs> to libertarians. Uh, and I, I can't imagine that they would uh, they would embrace him. I mean, they love him on uh, Assange and Snowden and the CIA, and they love him on vaccines. But other than that, he's a he's a liberal Democrat. Uh, he he supports uh, slaughter in Gaza. Well, and there you go, folks. I, I just wanted to get that out there. Get you on the record, Judge. I appreciate your time as always, sir. Until Anytime, next week. my dear friend. Until next week. Again, folks, that is Judge Andrew Napolitano. Always appreciate his time. Very generous with his time with this humble little talk show. Uh, this part of the program, before we hit this break, brought to you by Dylan Rings. And uh, there at Dylan Rings, of course, Josh and Leslie Ryder are ready to help you with any of your jewelry needs. They have an amazing selection from high-end pieces to everyday jewelry that, you know, still looks great, but it's not going to break the bank and it's not going to break your heart, say, if you lose it at the beach or whatnot. Uh, but right now, you need to go to Dylan Rings' Facebook page. Because if you're dreaming of a one-of-a-kind piece of jewelry, look no further than Dylan Ring's custom jewelry studio. Josh Ryder, as we've been talking about, the man is a true artist. And they have a strong relationship with vendors, meaning they can bring you your jewelry dreams, bring them to life, even if it's not in their current collection. So that's the thing. They know plenty of vendors. They can get the resources at you, that you exactly want. Rare gemstones to personalize designs. They've got the connections there at Dylan Rings to make it happen. Your vision, their craftsmanship, y'all can create something together that's truly extraordinary. Uh, I mean, it, Josh Ryder, that man, if you can dream it, Josh Ryder can make it a reality. I'm looking at a custom example of some of his handiwork. Absolutely beautiful uh, work here, folks. And that can be, well, you. That could be your finger with a great custom ring made by dylan rings so check them out today you can always go to dylanrings.com or again go to facebook or instagram to search dylan rings but i really encourage you to stop by 119 brown springs road right here in montgomery just off of atlanta highway and be sure to tell josh and leslie Ryder that joey that fella from the radio sent you we'll be right back he may not know whether he's coming or going but whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings, 6 till 9, and afternoons, 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. I'm with Miss Dot at the Eastbrook Flea Market and Antique Mall. Dot, spring is already here. Oh, I'm so glad, too. I'm tired of being cold. With spring, we're starting to bring out the wicker furniture. We are getting in the iron outdoor furniture and just, um, a lot of things that's just going to brighten your day. Now, if somebody needs some furniture for their home, you have a good selection, don't you? If there's any furniture that you can't find anywhere else, come to Eastbrook because we have a wonderful selection of solid, good, heavy furniture at excellent prices. Actually, better than you're going to find anywhere else. Just come see us and walk around all three floors and let's help you out to fill up those living rooms and dining rooms and bedrooms, but we've got it all. Do you have any booth space available at this time? I have booth space available, so come see us. All right, give us those hours of operation. Monday through Friday is 10 until 6. Saturday is 9 until 6, and Sunday 1230 to 430. Eastbrook Flea Market and Antique Mall, 425 Coliseum Boulevard. This is your roving reporter, and today I am talking with an elk. Uh, hey man. Mr. Elk, I was just wondering, what do elk do to take care of their money? Well, like most smart folks, we call David Erdis. You mean Alabama's most favorite asset preservationist? That's him, man. We call him up at 334-279-7431 or 205-479-0839. I see. Yes, he is our preferred money man. The money man with the money plan. Uh, you've been paying attention. Well, could you give us those numbers one more time? 334-279-7431 or 205-479-0839. And I just want to try to give you a heads up, man. Oh, what's that? I'm uh, not an elk. Not an elk, huh? Well, then, pray tell, what are you? Ah, Knights of Columbus. <laughs> I am not even going to make a comment. Uh, well, the baby liked it. Everyone that eats three meals a day is participating in agriculture, whether they know it or not. 
I'm Chef Morris, and I've been farming all my life. Caroline Dyson cares about farmers like us. We need somebody in Washington that understands us and understands what's happening and why it's happening. Caroline Dobson is the best candidate in this race. Caroline's tough. She's a fighter. The Biden administration is not about rural America. The labor cost and fuel cost are just strangling small business. Joe Biden is out of touch. The farmer didn't vote for him, and he doesn't care about him. We need people like Caroline in Washington, D.C. to give people confidence to move forward. Caroline Dobson is a fifth-generation farmer. She's got grit, she's got country values, and she's got what it takes. Nobody's going to dig their heels in and fight for us like Caroline Dobson. On April 16th, vote for Farm Back endorse Caroline Dobson for Congress. I'm Caroline Dobson, and I approve this message. Paid for by Dobson for Congress. Sometimes I struggle to get to sleep. My body stopped for the day, but my mind is still running. So I take ZQuil. ZQuil, the world's number one sleep aid brand, has a range of non-habit forming products to fit you and your family's needs. Invest in a great night's sleep for the best you tomorrow. I'm awake and ready to take on anything. Better days start with ZQuil nights. Explore our products at ZQuil.com. Use as directed. Keep out of reach of children. Broken bricks, falling fences, damaged doors, Gorilla Glue. <laughs> of course. It's incredibly strong and 100% waterproof and bonds, well, virtually everything. While you're at it, look for Gorilla Tape, a heavy-duty double-thick duct tape, and Gorilla Super Glue, great for all your quick fixes and repairs. There's also Gorilla Epoxy, Gorilla Wood Glue, Gorilla Construction Adhesive, of course. You get it. If you can break it, Gorilla can fix it. <laughs> for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. We get Montgomery talking 24 hours a day. The River Region's most trusted voice. News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. Is this how you conduct yourself in a democracy? Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views in the afternoon, as we call it online, Joey Clark Live. It is runoff election day here in Montgomery for the brand new Congressional District 2. Get out there and vote because it's uh, expected to be a low turnout. Your vote might really change things today, folks. So get out there and vote. But without further ado, we have another candidate out there. He's not in Congressional District 2 in Alabama, but he is, well, uh, running for president, going for the Libertarian Party's nomination. We have Mike Termott on the stream. Mike, how are you today? I'm good. Thanks, uh, Joey. It's a great joy to be with you and be with all your good folks in Montgomery and and in your area. Yeah, well, and uh, we're kind of talking to all the candidates uh, coming through all of your uh, nominating convention coming up soon. So I wanted folks to be aware of who might get the nomination there for the Libertarian Party. But the first question I ask all candidates, whether they run for Congress, Senate, mayor, city council or for president, is why do this to yourself? There's a lot that goes into a campaign. (laughs) It's not uh, all just about speaking to Joey on the radio. That would probably be enough, and it certainly (laughs) makes today a good day. But to pursue this uh, is a big lift, you know, to something that we campaigned for for well over a year. So I appreciate you asking. Indeed, you can probably tell I've been losing my voice over the past couple of days because I've been at a number of state conventions lately. The reason I personally am in this is because I recognize that the Libertarian Party has a big opportunity in 2024. I think that we all sort of believe that that's the case. And we understand why people are, you know, feeling on the outs from the Democratic Party and from the Republican Party. They're looking for something different for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is that each of those parties candidates is a little bit weird. But. I would also assert that it's more than just an opportunity, Joey. It's an obligation for Hmm. libertarians to participate in in a robust way. I think that we all feel like our government has gone off the rails. It has gone off the rails in terms of too much spending, uh, too much inflation, right? Too much criminal justice imposition on us. I think that we need a heavy criminal justice reform in this country. I think our foreign policy has gone off the rails. And I think it's up to libertarians to lead the charge back toward a constitution of delimited powers, put some of our government back in the bottle. I just don't think a Republican or a Democratic politician is going to lead the charge back toward that direction. 
Now, in reading your uh, bio, and I want to go through some of those issues you just listed in a second, but let's tell folks a little bit about you a little more. Uh, you know, it sounds like you've been a libertarian most of your life, but you've also lived and worked, let's say, a pretty well-rounded life. So what sort of jobs have you had? What's your career look like? Uh, where's life taking you? It's taken me in a couple of different directions. I grew up in commercial finance coming out of business school and engineering school. I worked for some financial institutions. I went back to graduate school to study economics. Subsequently, I've worked for the White House as an economist and I worked for a couple of other agency. I spent about a decade in Washington, D.C. as a professional advocate for freer markets and greater competition and deregulation. I was an entrepreneur for another decade. I had my own business uh, educating financial services professionals and providing consulting to some nonprofits and others. I've taught economics at three different universities, a lot of international stuff mostly. And as a second career, and this might be a little off the beaten path and sound unusual, but at the age of 49, I started 11 and a half years on the road as a police officer in Broward County, Florida and South Florida, which was a terrific experience. It was all as a registered libertarian. So as you might imagine, that runs to uh, a certain number of conversations and even arguments with, with folks. But it's the big reason I spend so much time now talking about how important it is to change our criminal justice system, to end the war on drugs, for example, and to, a, to do a much better job of holding police officers and police agencies accountable, in my view. Now, why at the age of 49 did you jump in? How, how did that decision come about, becoming an officer? It's something that I had always wanted to do. I put it off and put it off and put it off. I had first... Uh, took a, a, an entrance exam when I was in grad school, when I was uh, like 28 or so uh, in Washington, D.C., and just figured I didn't know how I was going to raise a family on that kind of money. And, uh, you know, police officers make more now than they used to, even in relative terms. And I found myself in a little bit different financial position at 49 and able to figure out how to get the kids through college. And, you know, at 49, you can't put it off much longer, right? right. Uh, there comes a point of no return. So that's when I finally jumped on the opportunity and figured it's now or never. And as a libertarian, I felt strongly about how the job should be done. And so it gave me an opportunity to, to put my feet where my mouth was and take a shot at doing the job the way that I saw fit. And I found a good agency that, you know, for example, had a different uh, separate vice unit, so I didn't have to get all involved with, you know, prostitution stings and right. drug stuff that I thought was kind of silly and stupid and counterproductive. I didn't have to get involved with all that. So I had actually a really good experience. Well, and uh, you, in, interesting life, I'll put it that way. There's a lot of other ways you could put it. I, I think it's uh, to your credit, sir. So uh, leaning on your economic knowledge and your experience there, uh, it's a basic question I've been asking all candidates uh, from all different parties. What is the cause of the inflation we're currently experiencing right now? And how can we remedy this for everyday people? The fundamental cause to peel it all back, if you peel that onion far enough, where you get to is the government spends too much money. The government spends too much money, mostly because of entitlement programs. It also spends too much money on defense, for example. It spends too much money on everything, but the big ones are entitlement programs and, and defense as a second piece. And that has gone out of control. And so along with that go the three ways the government finances itself. It taxes to pay for that and taxation has gone crazy. It issues debt to pay for it and that has gone really crazy. And then uh, the Federal Reserve issues extra money and uses that money to acquire some of the debt. And that has gone crazy. And that's why we've had uh, inflation. In my view, there's two different things that we need to do about that. One is we need to make the government stop spending so damn much money. Here, here. Easier said than done, right? I spent a couple of years working for the Office of Management and Budget at the White House. And so I, I have a, a, a good insight Having said that, insight isn't enough, right? It takes more than uh, knowing how to get it done. It takes a little political oomph. In my view, we need 
federal legislation to cap overall spending rather than going after particular programs. Because as you know, politicians don't like the idea of going after particular programs. But if you have an overall cap, it'll give people a chance to say, well, we're up against the cap. Everyone's going to have to take a haircut. That'll be politically a little bit more feasible. The second thing that we need to do is get the Federal Reserve out of the monetary policy altogether. Right now, there's no rules about how much money the Fed can issue. Your your listeners and viewers may not know this because it's weird, Mm -hmm. that the way we set interest rates in the United States on the U.S. dollar is that every six weeks, we lock up a dozen people in a room and basically just ask them what mood they're in. That's how it works. That's not even an exaggeration. That's not even a metaphor. That's literally how it works. It's a stupid system. And they feel all the political pressures than anyone else would. And so they're trying to make it easy on everybody. They end up issuing too much money. We get into an inflationary cycle and it makes it hard for people to make ends meet. Well, as you were just speaking there, I saw a Wall Street Journal update come up saying Jerome Powell is, you know, everybody's looking to the emperor. Is it going to be thumbs up, thumbs down? He's still (laughs) wobbling, saying with recent inflation reports, we're not sure if we'll lower rates. We're not sure if we'll raise them. And it's this sort of thing like this shouldn't be sound economics having somebody literally say reading the body language of the Fed chairman. No, it's a stupid system. In my view, we need a rule in place to cap the amount of money that we can issue. I would take it out of the hands of the Federal Reserve completely. As a matter of fact, the Federal Reserve system is an institution that we no longer need. One might argue it was a bad idea from the start, but we have certainly learned over the past 100 years that it's not doing the job that we had hoped it would be able to do, and we need to get rid of it. It, you're right. It is a, a silly thing, not only because of the bad policy that comes out of it. And by the way, the whole objective was to avoid the boom bust cycle. Well, we see that that's not worked. And research shows that if we had a rule in place controlling how much money could be issued, research suggests that we would have done a better job mitigating booms and busts than we do with this discretionary policy. But not only that, you know, to your point, can you imagine investors out there? trying to make important decisions about moving money around, not only you have to worry about the economy and rules and regulations and markets and their business, but in addition, they got to guess what Jerome is going to do, making the whole damn thing harder and less stable. It's it's a silly system. Right. And even if you had the smartest man in the world, and I have a lot of respect for Jerome Powell, they really don't know at the end of the day. That's, uh, so, it, it's, it's not personal, right? We're right. not suggesting he's the dopiest dope and dope them. It's just that <laughs> no one is up to the task. Yeah, if you wanted the dopiest dope and dope them or uh, the king of Nikum Poopery, appoint Joey. I think we could uh, we could make that work up there <laughs> you in DC. Make me the mayor, but we, you and I, would at least know enough that we wouldn't take on the responsibility to our discretion. Markets should be making these decisions. Here, here. And again, folks, we're talking to Mike Termott. Uh, you can go to MikeTermott.com. And it's Mike, how you usually spell it, T-E-R-M-A-A-T. And uh, again, MikeTermott.com. It's and- a little tricky because it's got two A's. I would encourage people to look at GoldNewDeal.org because it's easier to spell. Well, and, you know, I want to get a quick take and we'll move to I, I view the U.S. Uh, say power across the world and in this country. One is its world reserve status, the control we have of the global economy through our money and everything we just were talking about very much speaks to that. The other is, of course, uh, for lack of a better term, the United States empire. And I've been trying to get everybody to at least admit we have an empire, whether we call it one or not or think of it that way. And I, I'm of the mind that whether you stay or whether you pull back, it, we're just in a position where there are no good choices. And so we need to pick what price to pay. What would you do? This is a very open-ended question. What would you do with the United States empire? It is an open question. First of all, let me uh, agree with you and assert that, yeah, we do have an empire. Having said that, I would suggest it's an empire that doesn't work very well. Um if you were to judge it by the standards of, say, even the Romans when they were early on or the United Kingdom early on, even by those standards, which weren't all that good, you could argue, our empire works pretty badly. We don't get a good bang for our buck. If you were to consider how our military interventions have gone, you know, the well, ever since World War II, there really aren't examples that the American public would point to and say, 
sure, you know, that escapade cost us billions of dollars and thousands of lives, but it, it was worth it. You know, there really aren't examples in that category. And Joey, when you think about Iraq and Afghanistan, and this is, this is sad, we're not talking about billions of dollars. We're talking about trillions, and we're, which is weird. And we're not talking sad, super sadly, we're not talking about thousands of lives. We're talking about over a million lives lost. These things are not merely math problems, right? They're not merely economics questions. These are deep ethical values laden types of questions. I would argue that our foreign policy does not align with how Americans feel our foreign policy should be pursued. I think that if most Americans were asked, they would say if they were in charge, they wouldn't do these things. You know, you wouldn't, uh, you know, pursue war in Iraq for 20 years and kill hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. It's just not what most Americans would do. And so I think that we're in a, a pickle here where you're right, there's no great choices, but in the long run, and by that I, you know, I don't necessarily mean a couple of years, but certainly over the next generation, right. we would be better off both in terms of expense and aligning with our values and avoiding World War III, which ought to be the biggest objective of all, if we stop this empire silliness of projecting military hegemony around the world and telling people, you better do what we tell you to do or we're going to shoot you. It, effectively, that's our underlying message. And it, it, it has not worked as a practical matter. Well, and, and speaking of uh, practical matters, I've been trying to convince practical politicians I know in the Republican Party and Democratic Party that there's this practical elephant in the room uh, there might be a train coming down the tracks right at us. It's the national debt. And I think it'll hamstring our foreign policy capabilities. It'll hamstring our ability to create more money to spend like uh, we are uh, right now. How dangerous is the national debt? And is it really a practical impediment the you know, more we head into the future? Not only is it going to be an impediment to doing anything useful in the future, and I'm not even sure that's the bad news, uh, if it stops us from doing a number of stupid things, one might argue it's not all bad. The problem, as I see it, is that the federal government is not just likely, almost certainly to fail financially, to collapse financially before the middle of this century, unless profound changes are made to how much money it spends, which none of us anticipate without some important political uh, change. And the problem with that is not so much that the federal government would go away and, and you would miss it. I mean, I wouldn't miss it. I, I don't think this is an organization that's creating a whole lot of value in our lives. The problem is that if the government collapses, the bond market collapses, and if the bond market collapses, the dollar market collapses, and if the dollar market collapses, that's really a problem to your point earlier about it being the international reserve currency. Right. It would plunge us into a deep depression that would last not years, but in my estimation, generations. It'd be very difficult to climb out of a depression without working financial markets that are arranged around an agreed upon international reserve currency. I think that it would really be a problem for real people in the United States and around the world. And, uh, you know, it's interesting how I, these are issues that libertarians have been talking about now for decades. And uh, the say, establishment of both major parties has not really been paying attention to it in the way I think libertarians have. And I think in a way it's beautiful to see as much as it might mean we're about to go through a major crucible or calamity that, no, actually, this is the matter that I think anybody from any walk of life has to say these are the issues we have to wrestle with, hey, maybe we try some ideas that nobody else has tried in Washington for a few decades. Good point. As Donald Trump would uh, say, you know, what have you got to lose? Um, <laughs> you know, I heard your previous, uh, uh, I think there was an ad. I don't know if I'm allowed to plug one of your sponsors for you. Uh, I don't even know what, I presume it was a Republican. Uh, Caroline Dobson had an mm -hmm. ad on that said, you know, Biden is not for farmers. Not only do I agree with that, but I would point out to 
Caroline, that she could run that ad with a whole lot of other nouns. You know, Bidenomics is not for the businessmen. It's not for people of modest means. It is not for people with a lot of money and money to invest. It's not for creating a good corporate investment environment. Any reason you have for having joined the Democratic Party, most of my family are Democrats. You know, they joined the Democratic Party because they thought that's a party that would stand up for your First Amendment rights, that would put out there once in a while an anti-war message, that would have some classical liberal thought that, you know, you live your life by your own standards. The Democratic Party really doesn't represent that anymore. And that's kind of a, a shame for those people that join that party for those reasons. You know, you and your party have gone in two different directions. And I think that there are a number of people who are willing to give others uh, a look now. And I would argue that there are a number of people uh, who are disaffected and disappointed by the Republican Party. You know, oh, yeah. I grew up as a Republican. Uh, in those days, I felt like the Republican Party would stand up better than it does today for free markets, free trade, deregulation, uh, you know, uh, fiscal conservatism, strong money, uh, and cutting back spending, especially. And I, I think that you'd have to uh, argue that the Republican Party is not what it used to be on all of these issues. And so I think that people are willing to give not only a third party, any third party, a good look, but I think people are willing to give the third party as the Libertarian Party is a good look. Well, and if there are any politically homeless out there listening uh, to our conversation and they want to support you or at least find out more about you, how can they do so? Well, you can go to MikeTremont.com. You can go to GoldNewDeal.org. Obviously, Gold New Deal, we're poking some fun at the Roosevelt New Deal. We <laughs> believe that that has to be repealed and we're making fun of AOC's Green New Deal. So you can go to GoldNewDeal.org, which is all about building a new relationship between us and, and government. Read about the campaign. Yes, thanks for saying so. If someone wants to support the campaign, if you've got 50 bucks that's really annoying you and you want to get rid of it, there's a way to do that. But if you want to you know, reach out, uh, you got comments, questions, you can do that. And if you want to work with the campaign, we always need volunteers. We have a, a big team. We're getting ready for the general election and very excited to, to be ready. So uh, May 28th, our party will nominate a candidate. I believe that it will probably be me, but there are other great candidates as well. So if by some uh, weird quirk of fate, it's not me, uh, don't worry. Uh, we've got other great candidates who are absolutely worth supporting. Well, Mike, I really enjoyed our conversation today. I think we only really scratched the surface. We could probably talk for hours about uh, so much going on in this country of ours in the world, but uh, appreciate your time and best of luck in late May there on, uh, well, trying to get Thank the nomination. Thank you very much. We could go on for hours. You put on a telethon <laughs> and invite me. We'll do 24 of them together. Thanks, Joey. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Again, folks, that is uh, Mike Termott. I really appreciate uh, his time today. Uh, really do. I, I found uh, that man not only impressive with uh, just the full life experience, but uh, I think he is selling the right solutions the country needs. In fact, folks, if you are feeling politically homeless, whether it's uh, Mike or somebody else running for the Libertarian Party, at least give them a look. At least check them out. Do your homework, so to speak. Well, well now nobody wants to do homework, but yeah, do it. It'll make you better for it. Hey, we got to hit this very quick break. Be right back, folks. Want to carry News Talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. For too long, Alabama's statewide news companies have shamed us for our conservative Christian values. Alabama deserves a news company that cherishes our culture, a company that isn't bought and paid for by the powers that be. 1819 News is that company. Run by Alabamians for Alabamians, 1819 News celebrates what is good and beautiful about our state while exposing those who work against our values in secret. Just go to 1819news.com to learn more. Subscribe to our newsletter. That's 1819news.com. Do you or a loved one have leg pain? Are your legs feeling tired? Do you have heavy skin discoloration? Do you have leg wounds or varicose veins? Are your legs swelling or do they have spider veins? If you're experiencing any vein issues, contact the professional caring staff at Ivy Creek Vein Clinic. They can help. 
Call 334-514-3851. Ivy Creek Vein Clinic, located at 525 Hospital Drive, Suite B in Wetumpka. Hello to all my friends in the great state of Alabama. This is Lee Greenwood, and I'm deeply honored to extend my wholehearted endorsement to a true American patriot, Dick Brubaker, for Congress. His proven track record of principled advocacy, effective leadership, and dedicated public service guarantees that he will always stand firm in defense of our rights, our values, and our future. God bless you in Alabama, and God bless the USA. I'm Dick Brubaker, and I approve this ad. Jessica Pig here with Pig Enterprises. Blue Water Broadcasting has been a major part of our continued growth, connecting us with the right customer base at the right time, helping us to get you behind the wheel of quality pre-owned vehicles for the past 20 years. If you're looking to maximize your advertising potential, Pig Enterprises believes you'll get a squeal of a deal from Blue Water Broadcasting. Our advertisers are our biggest advocates. Call us to find out how radio can increase your bottom line. Blue Water Broadcasting. Local folks. Helping local business. The Rich Thomas Weather Network, brought to you by Montgomery Paint and Body. From a little fender bender to total body repair, MPB will fix it good as new, maybe better. For over 35 years, the Turner family has been getting you back on the road. Call 279 7325. Hi, everybody. Another warm, dry day today. More like late May than mid April. Today's high temperature in the middle 80s again. Limited sunshine with the sun filtering through some high clouds. Cloudy, mild tonight, overnight low 66. Tomorrow, most of us should stay dry with a weakening front approaching high 82, mostly cloudy skies. Then a little warmer, 86 on Thursday with a sun and cloud mix. Widely scattered showers holding off till Friday and Saturday, a better chance on Sunday. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. At CBNS Bank, we've been meeting the needs of our customers since 1906. Need help setting up new business goals? Our line of commercial loans can help you achieve them. Go to cbsbank.com to find a location near you. All loans subject to credit approval, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. At Guardian Credit Union, we believe that banking should be personal, just like the relationships we build with members. Imagine a place where you're not just a credit score, but a valued part of our community. At Guardian, our dedicated team takes the time to listen, understand, and tailor financial solutions that fit your unique needs from buying a car to saving for college and even starting a small business we've got you covered come experience the guardian difference and let's achieve your financial goals together guardian credit union where you belong federally insured by ncua if it concerns your community you'll hear about it on news talk 93.1 news talk 93.1 fm wacv Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views in the afternoon. Just a few minutes before our top of the hour break. Uh, 272-9228 if you want to get it on the program. Again, it is runoff day. So if you are in the brand new District 2, you should already know by now. You get out there and vote in the runoff, whether you're voting for the Democrat ticket or the Republican ticket. Uh, pretty big runoffs here. See who will be going head to head, Republican versus Democrat, in November. I already did my duty this morning. I didn't wear the sticker for long. I don't like the little stickers. It makes me feel like I'm in kindergarten. Like, oh, good job. Here's a sticker. Like, you got a sucker back there instead, lady. <sighs> so, there's plenty to get to today. It is fascinating. Speaker Johnson now saying he will not resign that he's going to stand strong. He doesn't want Hakeem Jeffries taking over the House of Representatives. And I think the Democrats controlling the House would not be great news going into this very strange election year. But Thomas Massey is now joined in with Marjorie Taylor Greene. They don't need many more. I think just one more to really start to trigger this vote on vacating the chair for the Speaker of the House. We've done this before. Are we about to see them do it again? Uh, it's hard to tell, but Trump doesn't seem too happy with that prospect as he continues to be hammered by lawfare. And it really is absurd at this point where these cases have uh, gone. Uh, absurd is the nice way to put it. It's a crime freaking illegitimate action and move. This is, uh, I think, just absolutely bonkers where we're at as a country. But, you know, 
It's like everybody's corrupt and just fighting over power. I, I don't want to think of life that way, but that's where my mind goes. Hey, let's go to line one. You're on there. Who's this? Yeah, Joey, I just, this is uh, Mr. Bill. I was hey, Mr. Bill. Wondering, I, where would you go to vote at in Elmore County today? Would you know? Uh, you would, If you're in Elmore County, you're not in the new district, too. Okay, really? How's the morning? Yeah, you right, and, uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, Gary Palmer's. That's District 6, congressionally. Hmm. Well, I thought it was District 2, but well, I know. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, there's a lot of folks still uh, wondering, well, am, I, am I in the new district? Thank you, federal courts. We really appreciate uh, all the clarity uh, that you've provided us in the name of fairness. And don't you love that, like, as soon as you, you have federal courts draw, like, a brand new district, then you have a bunch of folks who don't even live here running the district with a bunch of outside money to come and finance the campaigns. <laughs> Democracy, I guess. What a joke. The oligarchy has y'all brainwashed. Hey, we'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Riverside Chevrolet Master Control Center, this is WACV Kusada, News Talk 93.1 FM. When it's Chevy, it's Riverside. With SRN News, I'm John Scott. Donald Trump returning to a New York courtroom as jury selection in his alleged hush money trial enters a second day. The trial's first day ended Monday with no jurors selected. Dozens of people were dismissed after saying they didn't believe they could be fair. President Biden will begin three straight days of campaigning in Pennsylvania in his childhood hometown of Scranton. House Speaker Mike Johnson pushing for a vote on aid for Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan this week. The House Speaker has unveiled a plan to contort the package to squeeze it through the House's political divides on foreign policy. On Wall Street, stocks uh, are Waffling, the Dow ahead 107 points, but the NASDAQ is down three points. This is SRN News. Donald Trump's indictment proves that saving America is not going to be easy. There are entrenched powers that are fighting this with everything they've got. They want to keep control over the country, the narrative, and the nation's money supply. Hi, I'm Lance Wall now. I'm a news analyst, a Christian author, an evangelical leader. I speak to millions of people every week, people just like you. You see, what the elites are doing is using inflation and government handouts and now central bank digital currencies to determine how they're going to control America. And that's why I recommend all Christians start a gold IRA from the Birch Gold Group, because physical precious metals are one of the few ways you can maintain control over your own savings. To get a free info kit on gold IRAs, text the word FAITH to 989898. Birch Gold Group is the only gold company I trust. Get their free info kit and you'll see why a gold IRA can help you. There are no strings attached. Text the word FAITH to 989898 and you're going to be blessed by taking action right now. From the Blue Water Broadcasting News Center, here's today's top stories. A man has been charged with murder in a Montgomery homicide. 41-year-old Derek O'Neill Wilson is accused of hitting a woman in the head with a dumbbell at a home on Community Street shortly after midnight Sunday. The victim, 37-year-old Summer Blackman, was pronounced dead on the scene. Alabamians will go to the polls today to cast their vote in the 2024 primary runoff elections. The Republican and Democratic runoffs for the 2nd Congressional District are among the biggest races on the ballot. Exercise your right and get out to vote today. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Target is introducing a new technology to combat theft at its self-checkout registers. True scan cameras will be able to detect when items are not scanned. Shoppers will get audio and visual cues when they do not scan an item properly. The new technology will be rolled out to all Target stores within the year. From the Blue Water Broadcasting News Center, I'm Sky Mosley. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368. 
an equal housing lender. Hello to all my friends in the great state of Alabama. This is Lee Greenwood, and I'm deeply honored to extend my wholehearted endorsement to a true American patriot, Dick Brubaker, for Congress. His proven track record of principled advocacy, effective leadership, and dedicated public service guarantees that he will always stand firm in defense of our rights, our values, and our future. God bless you in Alabama, and God bless the USA. I'm Dick Brubaker, and I approve this ad. Hi, this is Carl Schmidt, naturopath and owner of The Herb Shop. Listen every Saturday to Winning Wellness and learn from experts in different fields of science and technology how nutritional supplements can help you. Listen to Winning Wellness every Saturday at 10 a.m. The views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management staff, or any advertisers. It's time for Montgomery's Conversational Radio Show. It's news and views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. After damning politicians uphill and down Dale for many years, as rogues, vagabonds, frauds, and scoundrels. I sometimes suspected, like everyone else, I often expect too much of them. Joey Clark. Welcome back to the program. Again, as the big boy said, 272-9228 if you want to join in. Here on runoff election day, uh, there was a sighting of a of it, sugar. At uh, Caroline Dobson's reception last night at a private residence, and uh, Kay Ivy was spotted uh, coming on in. I don't think Missy was with her, but I do like that dog. But uh, Ivy was saying, well, I'm just a longtime friend of Caroline and her family and uh, want to just wish her well. So the governor rubbing elbows with uh, those supporting Caroline Dobson. And again, get out to the polls, folks. You know, I often joke about presidential elections that we know the outcome before we even vote. And that's because we've got pretty good tools of understanding where people's opinion might lie. That said, when you have a runoff election where we're barely expected to get over 10 percent of people who are registered to vote turning out. That means just a few votes can change everything. It's all about getting your people out at this point. So we'll see. On the Republican side, will it be Dick Brubaker or Caroline Dobson? Will it be Shamari Figures or Anthony Daniels on the Democratic side? We shall see tonight. Hopefully the returns won't take too long. Let's go to line one. You're on there. Who's this? Hello, who's this? Anybody there? Anybody at all? Are you just messing with me? Am I going crazy? Is this actually, am I even on the air right now? Am I even awake? You know, folks, when a private citizen is robbed, a worthy man is deprived of the fruits of his industry and thrift. When the government is robbed, the worst that happens is that certain loafers and rogues have less money to play with than they had before. Now, the recent public fights and apologies over proposed reforms to Alabama's ethics laws have uh, jogged personal memories of watching past public corruption fights, reminding me of how lonely I feel when it comes to political corruption. And, you know, the memory I'm thinking of is watching the whole brouhaha. I was more on the sidelines, and I wasn't really even hosting a radio show, but I was around. I was watching other radio hosts give their point of view and play the game as they did. And I found myself, well, asking Am I the only one who finds the never-ending, feckless fussing over corruption in politics to be an utter waste of the public's time, money, and energy? I suppose I am somewhat alone in this. People seem to get worked up over the shiny object of corruption. But the deal is, is whenever I watch public corruption melodramas play out too closely, I end up feeling dirty and debased. Like I've been kept in the dark and forced to, forced to watch events unfold through a small hole in the wall, occasionally only catching a glimpse of the political elite playing with themselves as they play the rest of us. 
Alabama's public corruption fights always feel more like a circus of onanism. That means masturbation for out there keeping score. For political insiders, a perverse parade of lawyers, lobbyists, politicians, media personalities, they're the worst, political junkies, and social climbers. Seems much more like a circus of onanism than liberty and justice for all. And though I know there are many well-intentioned souls, well-intended souls, who care deeply about fighting political corruption in this state or beyond, I cannot share their zeal, or perhaps they cannot share mine. As much as I try, the best I can do is wish these reformers well, while warning them not to let their good intentions lead them astray. Remember, friends, corruption is always the cost of playing politics. And, uh, well, the road to hell is always paved with good intentions. Now, I suspect the delta between these reformers, the anti-corruption reformers and myself, is that they still believe in their public institutions. Whereas I believe such institutions have always been alien to me, do not speak for me, are generally hostile to my liberty, and do not deserve to exist at my coerced expense. It's not that I think corruption, public or private, is a good thing. Far from it. Sin is sin is sin. I just assume the government I am forced to live under is inevitably corrupt, and even swifter to claim its corruption necessary to prevent worse forms of corruption. Many are quite clever, says the government, so I'll deem all others' cleverness a criminal sin. Governments are only ever ethical in relative terms. For instance, the government of Gondor may be more ethical than the government of Mordor, but that doesn't necessarily mean Gondor is ethical or free. All forms of government being reflections of man's vain competition for power, status, and advantage over his fellow man, are fundamentally an exercise in predation, force, and fraud. And the predation need not be conscious. No matter how good intentions may be, government corruption will find a way. Even the most legitimate and lawful government will serve as a corrupting influence. Why? Because the government's lawful and legitimate powers are always an exception to the ethical rules the rest of us are called to follow. For example, consider a fairly universal ethic, the golden rule. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this is the sum, this sums up the laws and the prophets. That's, of course, Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. It sums up the law and prophets indeed, because all over the world, like China's Confucius had a version of this, the golden rule. Greece's Epicurus had his own version too. I've always been uh, partial to Hillel the Elder, his formulation. It's an old Jewish rabbi. He said, do not do unto others that which you hate done unto yourself. Do not do unto others that which you hate done unto yourself. I like the, the emphasis on the negative. Yet the government remains the one institution that is allowed an exception to the golden rule. The government is allowed to do that which you hate. Government, so the theory goes, must be allowed to transcend the rules itself to uphold the rules for everyone else. Even the best governments sustain themselves by predatory actions that would never be allowed by any other institution or individual. Thus, even the use of legitimate government power can be corrupting. And when the government's exception to normal ethical constraints becomes an everyday, well-worn tool to manage society and enrich competing interests, such a trend will prove destructive deleterious in a familiar, friendly, and subtle way. If you want to trick good people into doing wicked things with a yawn and a shrug, have them serve an ever-expanding government. Government, at best, recognizes man's corrupt nature, allowing the corrupt interest of men to check and balance other men's corrupt interests, without anyone being allowed to pretend their interest is the public interest. That's what I see all the time, people pretending their own particular interest is in fact the public interest. The problem with most ethics reforms is that they do not go far enough. That said, the best anti-corruption measure the public could adopt would be to abolish as much of the government as swiftly as possible, limiting the powers of the law to the most basic elements of justice, that is, the protection of persons and property. Now, I don't expect such an abolition to come to pass anytime soon, especially not here in Alabama. In fact, I suspect I am destined to share the same fate as Mr. H.L. Mencken when he said, quote, The ideal government of all reflective men, from Aristotle onward, is one which lets the individual alone, one which barely escapes being no government at all. This ideal, I believe, will be realized in the world 20 or 30 centuries after I have passed from these scenes. 
and taken up my public duties in hell. So, you know, you can talk about ethics. You can try to make the government that we have work a little better. I'll be a well-wisher. Good for you. If you can make things a little bit better on the margins, fine. But if we are serious about actually creating anti-corruption measures and creating systems that are the most fair to folks, equality before the law, so to speak, a true pure rule of law, then you can't continue to give all these government all these powers and expect things to not be corrupt. It's just absurd. If you want to get rid of corruption, start getting rid of the government. Let's try line one again. You're on the air. Who's this? Amen, Joey. How's, how's it going? Papa B. How you yeah, doing, Papa you're B? good. Let me turn this down a little bit. Can you hear me better now? Oh, yeah, you're good. I was getting a little uh, echo or something. Good job. Enjoy your soliloquy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're very well-versed, young man. Yeah, but I'm still, so, I'm uh, still an idiot, though. Don't get me wrong. Uh, so I... Uh, See an interesting dynamic here, you know, going on. Uh, first of all, with uh, the firebrand Republicans, Marjorie Ch Taylor Greene, and mm. whatever. You know, they, I just wonder: are they so stupid that they're willing to cut their nose off to spite their face type action? Because that's what's going to happen. And if you thought Nancy Pelosi was a bad speaker, bud, you just wait till Hakeem Jeffries takes over. Right. He is the real deal. Nancy Pelosi was just a forerunner. You know, um, I'm telling you, you don't want that guy in charge of anything. Well, but, and, and, you know, the Republicans are, I guess, spewing a lot of stuff. What are they trying to get enough to go along with the Democrats? to overthrow Mike Johnson? Is that what's happening there? Well, Thomas Massey's the latest voice to pop up, and I, I think he's probably my favorite in Congress, and he he has taken plenty of uh, arrows because of his stance. He's the guy who made them all come back and actually vote on all those trillions of dollars that they spent during yeah. COVID. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's one of those guys, but he apparently uh, he told reporters today that P. Massey has advised Speaker Johnson to resign now because he plans to co-sponsor the motion to vacate the chair and force him out. Massey is the first Republican to join with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, Massey goes on, he said, he should pre-announce his resignation so we can pick a new speaker without even oh uh, being without a GOP. Let's, so let's, in conference, just pick a new person. Let's not go there the whole charade we've done before. But you still don't have her confidence, so... Um, that's where it, that's the latest. You know, and that's the stupidest plan I ever did hear of, you know. <laughs> well, not really, but it's pretty stupid. It's up there. It, you know, I just don't, what, their plan is, uh, you know, more turmoil up there. I mean, Mike Johnson, if, if he hadn't done anything else, he's brought a little bit of stability to, you know, an unstable situation. The other thing that gets me is the rhino Republicans, you know, just saying, well, if you're not going to do things our way, we're just going to take our ball right. and bat and go home. A lot of them are you retiring. Know? That's exactly what's happening. Yeah. I mean, I, well, they don't just wait until the term's over with. Right. They just leave it. Well, you know? Unless you're Mitch McConnell, which you're like, damn, go, go now, go yesterday. Uh, uh, then uh, <laughs> Massey, somebody I think was asking uh, on Twitter of Massey, whoa, what was the straw that broke the camel's back? FISA, foreign war funding, spending more than Nancy Pelosi, all of the above. Massey all responded, above. all of the above. The camel has a pallet of bricks. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Um, it's bad, you know, but eventually you do have to try to reach some kind of compromise. I mean, unless you have an overwhelming majority, right. well, you know, you got to. You know, politics is the art of compromise. It's bad. We don't want it. But, you know, if you can get half a loaf, why not take it? And that's something that the hardline Republicans just have never got, you know, and, and have gotten their butts whacked for it more times than I care to remember. 
right. Um, well, the know, so. but then what frustrates me is those the more moderate uh, managers within the party. As soon as they do get something like a big majority, they mm -hmm. you know lose their balls or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's, that's the biggest mistake. You have to go big and bold. The example I always use is, remember when Paul Ryan came out with a balanced budget that would balance by 2040-something? Yeah. And the is Democrats... That, was that the plan? Yeah, or that, that's that, Rand Paul's plan. No, this was even worse than the penny plan. Like, this was oh, okay. going to take forever to balance. And, okay. again, it, it would take till 2040. He came out with this in the 2010s. Like, 30-year plan? Okay, good job, Paul <laughs> Ryan. But the Democrats <laughs> took that. And that's when they uh -huh. ran that ad of a Paul Ryan lookalike throwing a granny oh. out of a wheelchair off a cliff. Uh. <laughs> and so if they're going to do that, when you do an incredibly modest proposal, you have to go big and bold. Like, yeah, you do. Like, but you got it to your point, do it when you actually have uh, the goods. You got to keep your power. And we dry. had it. Oh, yeah. Boy, we had, did we ever have it. Back when George Bush was, uh, was it the second time or the first time? We gave him both the House and the Senate. Mm -hmm. Good. I mean, it was just incredible. And I thought all these great things were going to happen, and nothing oh, good so happened. Good. Well, I mean, that's when we got the Homeland Security. Yep. Boom, new, the whole new department. Great job. You got a new uh, socialist <laughs> prescription drug program because our, yeah. our Medicare wasn't set up as wisely as we thought. We got to add mm -hmm. more to it. Yeah. What, more. no child left behind in that era, too? Uh, I don't know, man. It was just so pitiful. I, I mean, I got sick to my stomach after uh, the whole thing started happening. He's, you know, doing more government. But anyway, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of, like I said, dynamic. Uh, you know, I'm just sitting here on the train watching the, you know, scenery go by. I don't know what else to do about it. But, you know, uh, comment on it. Talk about it. Well, Maybe it'll do some good. And maybe we, we find the right train conductor, whether that's Trump or somebody in the future. Last night I was watching, it's about an hour and a half interview with Jordan Peterson talking to Vivek Ramaswamy. And they, it was it's a great deep dive on what Vivek learned on the campaign trail. And he said, of all the things I started with, I became only more convinced that the system that we're talking about, whether you're talking about the administrative state or the way the two-party system with super PACs work on campaigning, He's pretty convinced the system as we have it now cannot be reformed. It can only be smashed to pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to th start thinking big mm -hmm. and bold as conservatives, which is usually not in our nature. We're the ones that want to keep order, right? We don't want to smash mm -hmm. or burn anything down. But it, it's yeah. it's such a mess <laughs> right now. That you've got to go big and bold. You're right. Uh, the uh, thing I <laughs> that's funny, you know, Trump, he's tied up with these trials, so he can only do so much you know, talking to the House and stuff. But I, I imagine him being like that big guard on uh, Shawshank Redemption <laughs> where, you know, he stands up in the middle and says, if I hear so much as a mouse fart <laughs> tonight, I'm going to, I swear by God and Sonny Christ, I, you will all visit the infirmary tonight <laughs> <laughs> to the Republicans. And that's what needs to happen. He needs to stand up there and say, shut up, you know, yeah. Don't try to change anything, especially this close to the election, because you could you guarantee if the Democrats get it, they, they I mean their level of being able to do mischief is just un incredible. So anyway. Well, what well, is right, it guys. as uh, Yosemite Sam said to Bugs Bunny? Well, shut up while you're shutting up. Something to that effect. <laughs> I hear you, bud. Uh, All right. Well, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Papa B. Again, 272-9228 if you want to join the program. That's 334-272-9228. Any of you out there watching on the Internet, feel free to join in. Though, no, we are an FCC-regulated show still, uh, unfortunately. Now, let's get a little sense of what has been happening straight from the horse's mouth. This is Thomas Massey with uh, in one of the office hallways there up at the Capitol. And he's surrounded by a gaggle of reporters. Uh, so let's listen in to Sassy Massey, what he's been saying about Speaker Mike Johnson. He wanted to use 500,000 warrants, and I went to the Ukraine. Those are the three things. There are people riding him like a horse. They don't care when the horse collapses. I'm here because that's going to throw our confidence into turmoil. Uh, if he would do what John Boehner did, when John, John Boehner had at least announced that he was cleaning the barn, and said, I'm leaving, whatever it was, eight weeks hence. 
or when you find somebody to replace me. If Speaker Johnson would do that, we could go without ever being speakerless, and we could be in control of it in the conference. But I'm afraid he is dead set, and the people who are pushing him are dead set on this thing. Riding that horse until it collapses. Congressman, can you wow. Yeah, and Massey is, whatever you think of him, one of the most intelligent members up there in that conference. But now let's go to, this is, I believe, Mike Johnson on uh, Fox talking about uh, how Trump is in his corner with all these threats from Marjorie Taylor Greene and now Thomas Massey. Mike Johnson is, well, standing strong. This is, I believe, with Maria Bartiroma. Iran launched hundreds of drones, ballistic and cruise missiles toward Israel, mm -hmm. with Israel's military saying that its air defense system fended off 99% of those attacks. The Pentagon says American military forces assisted in the defense of Israel, intercepting dozens of missiles and drones originating in Iran, Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. Mm -hmm. Iran claims the attack is in retaliation for a suspected Israeli airstrike nearly two weeks ago on an Iranian diplomatic building in Syria, which killed two top generals. Meanwhile, the assault coming just a month after President Biden signed off on renewing a waiver for Tehran, allowing the Ayatollah to continue to have access to $10 billion in frozen funds. Joining me right now with reaction in this Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is the Speaker of the House, Congressman Mike Johnson. Mr. Speaker, thanks very much for being here this morning. Hey, Maria, great to be with you as always. How, how does this change your plans this week in terms of voting on an aid package for Israel? Well, we've understood the urgency of this from the very beginning. I mean, a few days after I became speaker, way back in October, we passed our Israel support package. Uh, it's been sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk ever since because we included a pay for, as you remember. What a concept we took from the IRS expansion slush fund to pay for the Israel priority. We tried it again uh, just about a month and a half ago, a clean Israel. Uh, that uh, many Democrats, 166, as I remember, in the House voted against. Why? Because President Joe Biden said that he would veto that. So the House Republicans and the Republican Party understand the necessity of standing with Israel. We are going to try again uh, this week. And uh, the, the details of that package are being put together right now. We're looking at the options and all these supplemental issues. Well, the former president, President Trump, has talked about the possibility of uh, turning aid for Ukraine into a loan. Is that what you're considering? Yes, you know, I had a great visit with him at Mar-a-Lago on Friday, and he and I are 100% united on these big agenda items. And when you talk about aid to Ukraine, he's introduced the, the loan lease concept, which is a really important one that I think has a lot of consensus, as, as well as these other ideas, the Repo Act, which we've discussed, yeah. which is seizing the, the assets of uh, corrupt Russian oligarchs to help pay for this uh, resistance. I, I think these are ideas that I think can get consensus, and that's what we've been working through. Uh, we'll send our package, we'll put something together and send it to the Senate and get these obligations uh, uh, completed. Are you expecting the Biden administration to respond to Iran's aggression? Uh, I, we'll see what happens. Look, I, I do think that uh, we showed resolve last night. Well, what kind of question? Why would he, the Biden administration respond? I mean, it's, I think Israel is going to make a decision here soon. It's like every time. Like, people just want war with Iran. But let's keep going here. I'm going to skip ahead here to President Trump. Uh, not an easy situation for any speaker. I think he's doing a very good job. He's doing uh, about as good as you're going to do. And Speaking of Mike Johnson. Uh, I'm sure that Marjorie understands that. And, of course, he's referring to Marjorie Taylor Greene, who has threatened to uh, come up with the motion to vacate because she's upset uh, that the Republicans have yet to secure the border. Here's the Georgia congresswoman with me two weeks ago here. If Speaker Johnson really wanted to secure the border like he promised all of us he would and promise the American people that he would have told Chuck Schumer, we will not pass any government funding bills until our border, our border and funding bills have the HR2 in it or the Lake and Riley Act, or at least some measures within them. But he didn't. He completely failed in that. Mr. Speaker, why bring a bill to the floor to send money to Ukraine without having secured the border? So, Maria, what Marjorie fails to notice is that we have been fighting on the border. We fight on it 
every day. We passed our, our comprehensive border security package, HR2, at the very beginning of this Congress. It's been sitting on Chuck Schumer's desk. We passed all the resolutions. We passed these acts out of the House, and they get stopped in the Senate. See, this, the, the open borders Democrats control the Senate and the White House, obviously. So we've not been able to have a lawmaking exercise to, to meet that critical objective. But we're fighting every day. That's why we've been demanding that President Biden use his executive authority to seal that border. President Trump reiterated that demand at our, our press conference together on Friday. We need the White House to step up. In the meantime, Congress has to fulfill its obligations. If we had shut the government down, Maria, uh, in that appropriations process, that would have been on us. Because remember, the White House controls the pain that's inflicted on the American people when the government shuts down. Imagine TSA agents not being paid and flights being canceled for Americans. Imagine Border Patrol agents not being paid. And th those open borders, uh, the responsibility for that being shifted to us. Imagine troops not being paid at this dangerous time. So that simply wasn't an, an option for us. It would have reflected badly on us, and it would not have been helpful in our mission to grow, keep and grow the House majority, win back the Senate and win back the White House for President Trump so that we can save this country. That's what's at stake right now. And so, the party is 100 percent united on that agenda. Is there any path to securing the border under Joe Biden? Well, that's the thing. He has Section 212F authority under federal law. He has seven or eight different options under federal law, existing authority to do, frankly, what President Trump did. President Trump got control of that border because he was a strong leader. So we've been demanding of the White House in all of these negotiations, do your jobs. Yeah, but they're not going to. But you know, in a way, I feel for Mike Johnson, I feel for anybody who becomes speaker under these particular circumstances. It's a slim majority. I think Thomas Massey is right. There are people going to ride this horse into the ground, and um, the horse's name is Mike Johnson. But one thing that is true is you have to be principled, but you also have to be, you know, smart, strategic, think things through. And if you do not have the capability to say, start an invasion, you need to wait, bide your time, maybe hold back certain advances by the other side until you are prepared to start your own offensive. And right now, when I look at the Republicans in the Congress, they ain't got the goods to start any major offensive. Heck, half the team is kind of not on board with the agenda at the same time. So we'll see if Thomas Massey and Marjorie Taylor Greene's threats are made good on. But... Uh, what a mess. November is going to be when we actually start to decide things here. Or we might just kick the can down the road and have more just waste and muddling through. Never underestimate the power of the United States managerial class, especially in Washington, to muddle through the problem and not actually solve much of anything. Again, the number, 334-272-9228, if you want to get in on the conversation. This part of the program brought to you by James Cole and Cole Plumbing. And they're at Cole Plumbing. James and the team are ready to help you with any of your potential plumbing problems. Could be a real big deal, like a, a major leak inside or outside the home. Well, Cole Plumbing has this proprietary pipelining technology that allows them with minimal discomfort to you in that home to, well, solve the problem. They can get in there with this, uh, it's like a liquid resin-based uh, technology and system they use. That way, they're not going to have to tear out a bunch of drywall, dig up a huge hole. They can pinpoint where the leak is and stop it up, get it fixed. But, of course, they can help you with more everyday plumbing problems from a clogged drain to low water pressure, maybe even tree root invasion. Or it could be you just want to upgrade, say, a tankless water heater system. Or if you want to get real fancy, go with, like, a bidet or maybe you bought a Japanese toilet. I don't know. I hear they're very soothing. So check out Cole Plumbing today. They can help you across the board with those plumbing needs. Call them at 279-8919. That's 279-8919. And just remember, folks, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. He may not know whether he's coming or going. But whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings, 6 till 9, and afternoons, 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Weather is brought to you by the Johnny Adams Law Firm. I'm Johnny Adams with the Johnny Adams Law Firm, Alabama's personal injury law firm. Wishing you a fabulous day and a blessed evening. Stay weather alert. Hi, everybody. Another warm, dry day today. More like late May than mid-April. Today's high temperature in the middle 80s again. 
limited sunshine with the sun filtering through some high clouds. Cloudy, mild tonight, overnight low 66. Tomorrow, most of us should stay dry with a weakening front approaching high 82, mostly cloudy skies. Then a little warmer, 86 on Thursday with a sun and cloud mix. Widely scattered showers holding off till Friday and Saturday, a better chance on Sunday. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. At ASE Credit Union, financing your next adventure is easier than ever with rates as low as 5.25%. Apply online or visit your local branch today. Federally insured by the NCUA Equal Opportunity Lender. ASE Credit Union, your life, your goals, your ASE. Hi, this is Bo Goodson from the Goodson Group. Have you ever considered turning your home into a rental and build wealth at the same time? People throughout the River Region are doing that right now. By investing wisely in the right property or turning your current home into a rental is the secret. Hiring a property manager to professionally manage your property is the way to prosperity. Our company does all of the advertising, personally showing prospective tenants, does a thorough background check and credit report before moving forward. Over 15 critical services are provided to our clients in protecting the asset, but also providing the best residence in your home possible. Collecting rent on time and frequent inspections help landlords feel better about renting their house. And to provide clean, well-kept homes that anybody would be proud to call home. For a complete list of property management services, call Bo Goodson at the Goodson Group at 221-2883 or 551-0225. Everyone that eats three meals a day is participating in agriculture, whether they know it or not. I'm Chef Morris, and I've been farming all my life. Caroline Dodson cares about farmers like us. We need somebody in Washington that understands us and understands what's happening and why it's happening. Caroline Dodson is the best candidate in this race. Caroline's tough. She's a fighter. The Biden administration is not about rural America. The labor cost and fuel cost are just strangling small bits. Joe Biden is out of touch. The farmer didn't vote for him, and he doesn't care about him. We need people like Caroline in Washington, D.C. to give people confidence to move forward. Caroline Dobson is a fifth-generation farmer. She's got grit, she's got country values, and she's got what it takes. Nobody's going to dig their heels in and fight for us like Caroline Dobson. On April 16th, vote for Farm Pack endorse Caroline Dobson for Congress. I'm Caroline Dobson, and I approve this message. Paid for by Dobson for Congress. This is former Alabama Supreme Court Justice Glenn Murdoch. Alabama is a great place to live and work and raise our families because Alabamians are a good people of faith and traditional values. But a huge gambling bill in Montgomery would change our culture forever. Neon light casinos bringing more crime to our big cities and small towns highly addictive cell phone betting, and the state selling the lie of lottery riches to the poor and most vulnerable. With all that's wrong in the world, this is no time to give up on our traditional values in Alabama. Call and ask your senator to be the leader you elected them to be, to stand strong and vote no on gambling, and keep the Alabama we know and love. Thank you. Call your senator at 334-261-0800. 334-261-0800. 334-261-0800. Paid for by Alabama Eagle Forum, Box 130757, Birmingham. Are you tired of the mainstream media's biased reporting? Do you want to stay informed on the news that really matters to you? Look no further than 1819 News. At 1819 News, we bring you the latest in Alabama news, politics, sports, culture, and more. We've assembled a team of journalists with Alabama values dedicated to the truth and the truth alone. Visit us at 1819news.com today. That's 1819news.com. Subscribe to our newsletter. Honest News, Alabama Values. Hello, everyone. Robbie Pelt with Capital City Roofing. If you think about it, your home is your biggest investment in life. Your roof covers your home, so why jeopardize your biggest investment on a roofer you don't know anything about when you can deal with a reputable roofing company like Capital City Roofing? We have an A-plus better business rating, and the best manufacturers and workmanship warranties available. We do all residential and commercial roofing applications that are certified through the manufacturer to ensure you get the best material and workmanship money can buy. We also have your project in our best interest before and after construction has been done. Don't hesitate to call us if you have any roofing issues or questions. We will match any of our competitors' price and give you the same great workmanship warranty. We also give free estimates. Give us a call today and let us show you the difference. 277-3311. 
That's 277-3311. Or you can check us out on the web at www.capitalcityroofing.com. Capital City Roofing. We capitalize the roofing industry. The Health and Wealth Show. The Health and Wealth Show. The show so nice, we said it twice. Weekday evenings at 6 on News Talk 93.1 WACV. The Health Wake it up, son. Joke's over, hey? This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. News and talk without the static. The River Region's most trusted voice. News Talk 93.1 FM WACV. Joey Clark. Welcome back. The news and views in the afternoon, as we call it online, Joey Clark Live. You can always go to YouTube. That's the name of the channel, Joey Clark Live, or go to at the Joey Clark on the X platform. Happening live as I'm speaking, the articles of impeachment against Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas have been delivered by members of the House of Representatives to the United States Senate. And uh, the clerk, I believe, just read off uh, the charges there that have been presented by the House. It's all happening live right now, folks. Um, I'll keep an eye on it to see if there's anything really worth watching at the moment but right now it's a lot of uh, official statements being made presenting these articles of impeachment against secretary mayorkas for now let's go to randall hey randall how you doing good evening good evening sir mr live yourself y'all live and direct baby now look it's it's uh and speaking of that uh next year you'll be in you'll be put into it too but uh because Kevin Elkins has been uh, Facebook Live for a year. I don't know how long you got to do it, but I know at least a year. Uh, he's been he's, he's in the uh, Alabama uh, Awards, uh, Music Awards. Uh, he's a nominee, and he's the only one like that has a show like like this that's not really a podcast type setup in that in that uh in that in that category. So uh, I I think I know I did. I sent it to your messenger if you wanna. You know what I mean? If you want to look at Jesse Lynn's in there, y'all. Y'all want to go vote for Jesse Lynn. She's up for, uh, and then for her to come off of being Miss Rodeo USA and still hold that discipline that the uh, keep her, you know, what I mean, a mind on music and doing shows to keep her involved in, uh, to, to so she would be put in this. That's that's that's, that's amazing among itself, and and a tall county on forever is in there, and then, uh, as a as a few for Montgomery, but. Uh, mm-hmm. Y'all, you scan down through there. Y'all see it. You can vote <laughs> as many times as you want in this one. So, uh, yeah. hey, yeah, it's your hardest to get here. But, but uh, on the on on the, the the house member, I I think it was the house. Him saying that we just gonna seize Russian oligarch stuff to pay for it. Is, I mean that didn't. Did you? I mean, did, how, how much does that bother you? Did that even? I mean, I know libertarian side does, but I'm not personally. I mean, what do you? What does that even say? Where we at now that we would say that? Like, we just gonna go over there and see some accounts? Is he talking about accounts that hook to America? I guess is that is that what he was you know, saying? These are the dollar reserves that Russia held over the world that was uh, they were essentially frozen and cut off from what's called the SWIFT system. Um, and then it would be taking these funds that are now frozen and essentially handing them to the Ukrainians. And I think oh. this is just chipping away at the international monetary system, um, at the payment systems. And there are a lot of countries that go, oh, yeah, look, yeah, if you do get on the bad side of the United States, they'll literally just steal your money. And and you know what? This uh, I don't know if we talked about it yesterday. Uh, no, I know we did not. Uh, but. Donald Trump ain't the first one that they really done this. Ta- I mean, I mean, Donald Trump is like money wise, but since it was tax season, uh, I, when I was studying 
It looks like Joe Biden's kids was a sacrifice, but but Jill's first husband, they locked him up. He he missed. He, he didn't turn in one quarter. He was just a few days late. You know how they the company uh, a business has to do every quarter, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it was January, February, and March, which is three months. Three, which I mean, I'm gonna skip that part, but that's three. And then it was just a few days, like into the uh, him him pin past his date for him to turn in the payroll taxes of the employee, and they took his business. And, you know what I mean? And next thing you know, Joe took his wife. They put that man in prison. Him, you know what I mean? They, and they was some big to do people, like the little the little place that had like some big names would come through. You know what I mean? Like and and uh, uh, shake hand. I can't think of the name of the little bar out right off, right off my uh, head, but but this it, they did the same thing to him, man. I'm talking about days late. And and then the border, they all keep hollering. Like, like, I mean, I don't know if you pay attention. I just went. I couldn't think of the name of the of the. Uh, of uh, the ray gun that you know what I mean the little the little thing that yeah, they call it. And yeah. man, there is so many articles right now, Joe. I'm not like they was not like that before. From like 2017, and they, they there was one about how bad you know what I mean it was. But now they they talking about the gun they've been testing, and this is a 2010 article, and they talk about how bad it is, and that uh, they was going to use the control prison, not not like the thing that they were going to use out in California, you know, in L.A. But this is like a little handheld device, and and there's articles everywhere about it now. Since, right. Since you know, what I mean, it's, I mean, I, I it's just I don't know. And then the bo- I don't know the border wall. I know the Dominican Republic. I know us, uh, but man, we are that border wall we putting up over there, baby. We need you all to see what they doing there. I mean, they not only are they doing a wall, but it's drones, it's vibration, it's sure. it's, it's it's everything that's. That we that you want over here, if you know what I mean, for the wall, and they are getting it there right now as we speak. Like I mean, trillions. Yeah, well, of if we the have wall. the capabilities of securing the southern border. Yeah, uh, just the political so, will is not there by any means, and there's a lot of cheats and liars that actually run things. I, I got to run, Randall. I appreciate the call, man. Yes, hey, Hi, don't go down the rabbit holes too much, kind sir. Again. Two seven two nine two two eight. If you want to get it on the program, the uh, well, yeah. What do they call it? The impeachment is now been delivered to the Senate. We can listen for a second here. Nurse. Article one: willful and systemic refusal to comply with the law. Mm. The Constitution provides that the House of Representatives quote shall have the sole power of impeachment end quote, and that civil officers of the United States, including the Secretary of Homeland Security, quote, shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors, end quote. In his conduct while Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro N. Mayorkas, in violation of his oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, to bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and to well and faithfully discharge the duties of his office, has willfully and systemically refused to comply with the federal immigration laws in that. Throughout his tenure as Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro N. Mayorkas has repeatedly violated laws enacted by Congress regarding immigration and border security. In large part because of his unlawful conduct, millions of aliens have illegally entered the United States on an annual basis with many unlawfully remaining in the United States. His refusal to obey the law is not only an offense against the separation of powers in the Constitution of the United States, it also threatens our national security and and has had a dire impact on communities across the country. Despite clear evidence that his willful and systemic refusal to comply with the law has significantly contributed to unprecedented levels of illegal immigrants, entrance, the increased control of the southwest border by drug cartels, and the imposition of enormous costs on states and localities affected by the influx of aliens, Alejandro N. Mayorkas has continued in his refusal to comply with the law and thereby acted to the grave detriment of the interests of the United States. The man speaking here is named Mark Green. He's a Republican from Tennessee up there reading off the charges now brought by the republican house he is of course speaking from the well of the senate mark green being one of the few uh house impeachment managers 
you know, like Lindsey Graham used to be, you know, during, remember the Bill Clinton impeachment? It's not just about sex. Yeah, he was a house manager when he was talking about that, I believe. So uh, maybe Mark Green has a great career in the Senate, I had. Who knows? But uh, that's happening live in the Capitol as we speak, folks. I got to hit this quick break. But first, this part of the program brought to you by Alabama Home Mortgage. And they're at Alabama Home Mortgage, Kim Williams and her team are ready to help you, well, with buying a home. Especially if you're a first-time home buyer, they're going to help you every step of the way, from pre-approval all the way to closing day. And, you know, when people see, wait, you got pre-approved from Alabama Home Mortgage, they know you're really legit. And, again, Kim and Madeline can walk with you each step of the way from inspections to appraisals. And when it gets down to actually you know, closing day is upon us, they're going to be there by your side at Alabama Home Mortgage. And, of course, they can also help you with a great refinance deal if you're looking to well, get credit card debt off your back or consolidate any sort of debt. Or it could be you just want to reinvest in your property or yourself uh, or your family. It's money and value you built up in your home. You can use it how you please, and you can get the best possible deal there at Alabama Home Mortgage. So call them today, that number 567-4223. That's 567-4223. Or you can always apply online at myalabamahomemortgage.com. There is a difference in mortgage companies. Let Kim and Madeline prove that to you today. Want to carry News Talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. Hello to all my friends in the great state of Alabama. This is Lee Greenwood, and I'm deeply honored to extend my wholehearted endorsement to a true American patriot, Dick Brubaker, for Congress. His proven track record of principled advocacy, effective leadership, and dedicated public service guarantees that he will always stand firm in defense of our rights, our values, and our future. God bless you in Alabama, and God bless the USA. I'm Dick Brubaker, and I approve this ad. Rich Thomas Weather, a service of Wiley Sanders Truck Lines, where dump truck drivers are in demand. Wiley Sanders is on the grow. We need dump truck drivers now. Call 855-77-9785. Hi, everybody. Another warm, dry day today. More like late May than mid-April. Today's high temperature in the middle 80s again. Limited sunshine with the sun filtering through some high clouds. Cloudy, mild tonight, overnight low 66. Tomorrow, most of us should stay dry with a weakening front approaching high 82, mostly cloudy skies. Then a little warmer, 86 on Thursday with a sun and cloud mix. Widely scattered showers holding off till Friday and Saturday, a better chance on Sunday. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. For the lowest prices around on flooring and DIY flooring installation supplies, Budget Floors and More is your new best friend. Luxury vinyl plank, carpet, ceramic tile, floor installation supplies, and more with prices lower than the big box stores. Budget Floors and More, Hunter Lane, across from Delray to Publix. It's Johnny from Sinclair's from Bond Road. We've been in business almost 30 years. Sinclair's East. Juanette Taylor. I think if you hadn't tried us, you should give us a try. We've got a great menu. Offered anything from chicken fingers, wings, salads, fajitas. At lunchtime, we do great country lunch with different vegetables and different meats every day. Sinclair's, where you get great sandwiches and our daily meat at three special at lunch, two great pasta, chicken, steaks, and seafood for dinner. Our most popular items are, we got a soup called she crab soup, which is extremely popular. We've got a bunch of pasta dishes, which people love. Mediterranean chicken is my favorite. Sinclair's. We do live music, light stuff on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and then on Fridays and Saturdays, maybe three-piece bands or four-piece bands. Come see why Sinclair's has seen lesser restaurants come and go over the years. Johnny Sullivan Sinclair's at the corner of Vaughn and Taylor. Find them on Facebook at Sinclair's East. Google search Sinclair's Restaurant. Sinclair's. Now you can add the power of digital advertising to the number one reach of radio. Let Blue Water's 20 years of local advertising and marketing success show you how. Grow your business with a complete suite of digital solutions combined with the reach of the most listened to radio group in the River Region. Call us or go to bluewaterbroadcasting.com to find out how we can increase your return on investment. Blue Water Broadcasting, local folks helping local business. 
Is spring cleaning making your floors feel, well, a little worse for the wear? Don't just clean them, upgrade them. Carol's Carpet Flooring America can help you transform your home with beautiful new flooring and countertops. Carol's Carpet is locally owned and operated, so you're supporting the community. At Carol's Carpet, you'll get expert advice to help you find the perfect flooring. Hardwood, carpet, laminate, tile, or even luxury vinyl. They'll work with you to create the exact look you've been dreaming of. Carol's Carpet. New floors this spring. Makes your whole home sing. Carolscarpet.com on the Northeastern Boulevard. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Alabama Home Mortgage. Alabama Home Mortgage, 567-4223. Visit them on the web at myalabamahomemortgage.com. NMLS number 1586368, an equal housing lender. The River Region's first and only news talk station on FM. Live, local talk. News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Joey Clark. Welcome back. It looks like they're still talking about all the different things they're impeaching Mayorkas for, but uh, even though the impeachment articles against Alejandro Mayorkas have arrived in the Senate, I think uh, Chuck Schumer is going to just sit on it like he's a goose or something. Sit on it like he's about to lay a big old egg. Breaking with a lot of, you know, tradition, I suppose. We'll see where all this goes. I don't think the Democrat-controlled Senate wants a big old trial about how awful the southern border is right now leading into presidential election season. See, there's always a political angle, but it's only dirty when the other guy does the political stuff, not when my side does the political stuff. I'm just defending myself against their dirty political stuff. And... uh the dirtier and dirtier it gets, the lower and lower we all become, I suppose. Now, the judge in the Trump ch uh, case has now admonished the Trump team for Donald Trump saying all sorts of things negative about the judge, negative about the judge's daughter. Trump has been admonished. How dare he speak out how we know he's always going to speak out. Now, I believe Trump started the day with this little clip here. And this is Trump uh, outside the courtroom about to go in there. And he's now talking about how well the schedule of the trial is interfering, not just with his campaigning, but with going to see his son graduate from high school. Let's listen in. So thank you very much. Uh, we had some amazing things happen today. As you know, my son is graduating from high school and it looks like the judge will not let me go to the graduation of my son who's worked very, very hard. Uh, he's a great student. He's very proud of the fact that he did so well. And I was looking forward for years to have his graduation with his mother and father there. And it looks like the judge isn't going to allow me to escape this scam. It's a scam trial. If you read all of the legal pundits, all of the legal scholars today, there's not one that I see it said this is a case that should be brought or tried. It's a scam. It's a political witch hunt. It continues and it continues forever. And we're not going to be given a fair trial. It's a very, very sad thing. In addition, as you know, next Thursday, we're before the United States Supreme Court at a very big hearing on immunity. And this is something that we've been waiting for a long time. And the judge, of course, is not going to allow us. He's a very conflicted judge. And he's not going to allow us to go to that. He won't allow me to leave here for a half a day, go to D.C. and go before the United States Supreme Court because he thinks he's superior, I guess, to the Supreme Court. And we got a real problem with this judge. We have a real problem with a lot of things having to do with this trial, including the D.A. Because you go right outside and people are being mugged and killed all day long. And he's sitting here all day with about 10 or 12 prosecutors over nothing. Over nothing. Over what, over what people say. Over what people say shouldn't be a trial. So I just want to thank you very much. But uh, that I can't go to my son's graduation, or that I can't go to the United States Supreme Court, that I'm not in Georgia or Florida or North Carolina campaigning like I should be. It's perfect for the radical left Democrats. That's exactly what they want. This is about election interference. That's all it's about. Thank you very much. Wow. 
Well, yeah, I mean, Trump ain't going to shut up and the judges are going to do what they're going to do, I suppose. What a freaking mess. And it shows the country coming apart at the seams. Uh, in a way, we're going to have to go through this crucible, I suspect. And hopefully we'll come out on the other side stronger, a new alloy, so to speak. But in the meantime, it's going to hurt. And it's going to hurt a lot. But I, I think it's starting to get incredibly vicious uh, and petty. And at a certain point, I'm sure y'all have you ever gotten divorced, uh, you get to a point where you're like, what are we even fighting over? I don't even know what we're fighting over anymore, honey. Just stop crapping the bed when I'm not home. I mean, that's a terrible surprise to walk back into, Amber. Hey, this part of the program brought to you by Montgomery Men's Health. And there at Montgomery Men's Health, you know, guys, two things can affect men as we mature. One is, uh, well, issues in the bedroom, like erectile dysfunction. The other is more general of a problem. It, in fact, might be causing you those problems in the bedroom. Low testosterone. And these things are nothing to deny, put off, be ashamed about, and certainly don't wait to get it fixed. I know guys hate going to the doctor. I certainly do. But Montgomery Men's Health was created to take care of guys just like us. And the reality is, say you have ED problems, pills often quit working, and guys start making excuses for not coming to bed. Uh, you know, guys will even, studies have shown, be more irritable and argumentative on purpose just before bed so they can avoid failing at intimacy. They don't even want to go there, so they'll blow up the opportunity before the opportunity even presents itself. That's a tough place to be in. So, guys, if you are lacking motivation, energy, and drive, including a decreased sex drive, you just feel like you're walking through your life in a fog, knowing whether or not you have low testosterone is huge in combating some of these issues. Now, the providers at Montgomery Men's Health can help you by conducting a testosterone-focused lab workup plus a consultation for only $99. And Montgomery Men's Health has low-T treatments that can truly change lives. Men can experience higher energy, better gains in the gym, brother, better mental clarity, improved sleep patterns, a faster metabolism, usually even notice an increased libido you can actually book the same day that you call guys it's time to feel amazing and hit your goals this year that number 440-3663 that's 440-3663 or go to montgomerymenshealth.com to book your appointment today broadcasting from the riverside chevrolet master control center this is wacv kusada news talk 93.1 fm when it's chevy it's riverside <laughs> I'm John Scott. House Speaker Mike Johnson pushing for a vote on aid for Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan this week. The International Monetary Fund has upgraded its outlook for the global economy, saying the world appears headed for a soft landing, reining in inflation without much economic pain and producing steady, if modest, growth. The flame that is to burn at the Paris Olympics has been kindled at the site of the ancient games in southern Greece. The flame will next be carried from the ruined temples and sports grounds of ancient Olympia by a relay of torchbearers. That 11-day journey through Greece will culminate with the handover in Athens to Paris 2024 organizers. The Dow ahead four points, the NASDAQ now down 28. This is SRN News. Biden has started tracking Christians like cattle. Yes, you heard it right. He pressured banks to tag transactions for certain keywords. One of them is Holy Bible. It's a horrifying and creepy attack on our religious freedoms. It's made possible by a digital financial system that makes you a sitting duck. But you do have other options. I recommend a physical gold IRA from Birch Gold Group. I'm Lance Wallnow, a news analyst, a best-selling author, and evangelical leader to people who cherish their financial independence. A precious metals IRA can help you avoid the scrutiny of Biden's anti-Christian bureaucracy while also preserving your retirement savings. To find out more, get your free info kit on gold IRAs by texting the word FAITH to 989898. Birch Gold Group is the only gold company I trust. Get their free info kit and see how a gold IRA can help you. Text FAITH to 989898. There are no strings attached. So text FAITH to the number 989898 right now and take action to protect your own prosperity. The Johnny Adams Law Firm. They want you to stay safe on the road. Please don't text and drive. Get to your destination safely. Your family and friends will thank you. From the Johnny Adams Law Firm. 
Hi everybody, another warm, dry day today. More like late May than mid-April. Today's high temperature in the middle 80s again. Limited sunshine with the sun filtering through some high clouds. Cloudy, mild tonight, overnight low 66. Tomorrow, most of us should stay dry with a weakening front approaching. High 82, mostly cloudy skies. Then a little warmer, 86 on Thursday with the sun and cloud mix. Widely scattered showers holding off till Friday and Saturday. A better chance on Sunday. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. CBNS Bank has digital banking solutions to help you keep up. Check balances, pay bills, and much more. Learn more at cbsbank.com. Charges and fees may apply from your cellular service provider. Contact your service provider for information. Member FDIC. 1819 News. State lawmakers in the Alabama House have passed a bill that bans vaping for anyone under the age of 21. The bill passed with a unanimous vote and now heads over to the state Senate. However, there are only eight days left to the legislative session, and a similar ban was passed last year by the House only to die in the state Senate. HB 65 was offered by Democrat state lawmaker Barbara Drummond and requires retailers to not sell vape products to anyone under 21 and to place those products in areas not accessible to those under the age of 21. This bill has also allocated resources for the enforcement of the law to the Alcoholic Beverage Control Board. The co-owner of a vape shop in Birmingham, Dylan Gilbert, told 1819 News that this bill would set up a monopoly for big tobacco products and close down smaller vape shops. I'll be back with more Alabama stories after this. I'm Amy Beth Shaver with Alabama Unfiltered Radio, and when I need the news and I need it fast, I turn to Andrea Tice and the Daily Detail. On my way in, it is the most convenient best way for me to digest what's going on so that I can use it for our show. She tells you what's going on in Alabama that day first and fast. So listen to the Daily Detail with Andrea Tice. Don't miss out. The Daily Detail is available wherever podcasts are found. Governor Ivey was seen this past Monday night at an event for Republican runoff candidate Caroline Dobson. Today is the actual runoff vote between Dobson and Dick Brubaker as they seek the Republican nomination to run for the 2nd Congressional District. Ivey has not publicly endorsed a GOP candidate in this race, and the governor's spokeswoman, Gina Maiola, says that Ivey and the Dobson family have been longtime friends. And the quarterback who played alongside Joe Namath for the Crimson Tide has died at the age of 79. Steve Sloan went on to spend many years coaching at colleges in Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Texas. I'm Andrea Tice. For more news affecting Alabamians, go to 1819news.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the Daily Newsletter. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. If you'd like a chance to win a 2024 Land Rover Defender, you'll want to visit Wind Creek Watumka. Play and earn entries every day. Then be there Saturday, April 27th, starting at 5 p.m. to see if you drive off in the Land Rover or win thousands in cash and free play. Do what you want. Bring home a new Land Rover Defender. Visit Wind Creek Potomka to find out how and to find your winning moment. Problem call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hello to all my friends in the great state of Alabama. This is Lee Greenwood, and I'm deeply honored to extend my wholehearted endorsement to a true American patriot, Dick Brubaker, for Congress. His proven track record of principled advocacy, effective leadership, and dedicated public service guarantees that he will always stand firm in defense of our rights, our values, and our future. God bless you in Alabama, and God bless the USA. I'm Dick Brubaker, and I approve this act. The views and opinions of the following program are solely those of the host and other contributors. These do not necessarily represent those of Liberty Acquisitions 825, Blue Water Broadcasting, its management staff, or any advertisers. It's time for Montgomery's Conversational Radio Show. It's news and views on News Talk 93.1 FM. To join the conversation, call 272-9228. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that is an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. I'm the Nazi! I'm the Nazi! Hold on to your butts. Shut up, silly woman! Joey Clark. Welcome. 
final hour of news and views in the afternoon, or as we're calling it online, Joey Clark Live. Like and subscribe, folks, there to the YouTube channel, Joey Clark Live, or follow me on the X platform at the Joey Clark. Now, uh, in a second, I'm going to go to one of my favorite commentators that's out there in the world today. One of these days, uh, I want to sit down and talk to him. And in fact, I, I'm thinking of making a list, calling my shot of all the different folks I would like to talk to on this show or even in other venues. And that guy's name I'm thinking of right now is Coleman Hughes. We played a clip that went viral of his when he was on The View. Uh, but then he was on the brand new firing line, which is a little more, uh, is it Miss Hoover there? She's, uh, she's a smart cookie and knows how to push back, do a good interview. So we will uh, listen to Coleman talking about, well, a call for actual end race politics and how, well, the political politicization of race in America, even when you think you're politicizing it in a good direction, nope, it's just going to bring back all the same old damn problems that have bedeviled the society for too long when it comes to the question of race. You know, people keep saying, when you have that conversation about race, well, I'll play a little bit of one in just a second. The beautiful thing is there are a lot of conversations going on about race. And I think there are a lot of uh, reasonable people from a lot of different perspectives. But it's usually the folks who very uh, vehemently, very confidently say we need to have a conversation about race. It's like It sounds like you just want to use it as a cudgel. And you don't actually want everyday people talking to one another and talking through these issues. It seems you already have an outcome you prefer. But we'll get to that in a second. Because first, I want to go to what is one of the dumbest ideas I've seen in a while from the House here in the great state of Alabama. You know, they cut the grocery tax. Great idea. You didn't cut it enough, but you should have cut it even more. But you cut it. Thanks for cutting it a little bit. You know, removing the tax in overtime. Didn't mind that at all. In fact, I appreciate the bipartisan support from somebody like an Anthony Daniels. I appreciate that Alabama has low property taxes. Though we're kind of middle of the pack when you add up everything else. But there's this push now by the House of Representatives here in the great state of Alabama. Two bills. One to raise the state's online sales tax from 8% to 9.3%. And the other to provide a one-day tax holiday on certain recreational supplies. So we're going to take one tax off and add it back. But House Bill 258, sponsored by State Rep. Chris England, would match the tax collected by online retailers, also called the Simplified Sellers Use Tax, to current cumulative sales tax rates in Alabama. HB 258 is reliant on the passage of House Bill 257 by State Rep. Joe Lavorn, which creates the one-day sales tax holiday. Currently, the state imposes a 4% sales tax for retailers. County and municipal taxes bring the state's average sales tax rate to 9.3%. The online tax rate would be recalculated every five years, but the initial increase would be just 1.33%. The fiscal note attached to the bill calculates a total of $121 million in extra state revenue. You have enough revenue! So that's not, we don't have a revenue problem in the state of Alabama, by any means. 65% of the revenue would go to municipalities with a preference for areas with a population of 50,000 folks or more. 15% would go to counties and 20% would go to the Alabama State Department of Education because, again, it's not like they're hungry for money. Does every frickin' tax have to go into the ETF to be sunk into not teaching kids anything? But y'all believe, y'all just go ahead and believe in your institutions. They're the only ones we got. We got to believe in them. But during the public hearing, the Alabama League of Municipalities and the Alabama Retail Association spoke in favor of the bill. Initially, England's bill did not allocate any money to schools. However, England amended the bill at the urging of public school interests, who spoke during a public hearing two weeks ago. But HB 257 and 258 are on the House's special order calendar for today. Reaction to the bill has been mixed. England and House Education Budget Chairman Danny Garrett say the legislation will drive more people to local retailers. 
Opponents have opposed any tax increase in general, pointing to increased costs across the board, paired with rampant inflation, right? Raising the online sales tax to match the sales tax of local cities could cause an endless cycle of raising taxes. If cities and counties are concerned about their local businesses being competitive, they should lower their local sales tax rate to create better free market competition. Amen. Other members of the House who spoke to Craig Monger of 1819 News said the bill would have plenty of votes against it. Most expect the bill to pass in the Republican supermajority House, but that remains uncertain. Several members of the Senate told Craig Monger of 1819 News that the bill would face an uphill battle should it pass the House, as it should. Dadgummit, as soon as we remove one tax, you throw more on! And the government taking money from others and giving it to then municipalities, other government, that doesn't make anything fair. And the reason you're losing at the local level of your retailer is not because of the frickin' tax rate. People aren't going to Amazon. It's like, whoa, look, the taxes are so much lower. No, they're going to Amazon because they actually have what they want. Using the government to try to make something like this fair in terms of economic interest at the local level this is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. It's going to crowd out actual entrepreneurship. It's not going to really help the mom and pops at the end of the day. It's just going to put more money into the government for them to waste. While they call their corruption public service. What a joke. 272-9228. Just wanted to get that off my chest because when I saw that ho that headline today i'm like really we're going there please take off more taxes stop taking money from us it's not yours it's not yours at all and it's fascinating to me this idea that well you know it's only private greed that's the problem the government's never greedy we in the public sector, we're serving. What, when did human nature change all of a sudden? Like people who make their living off stealing from other people are better than the folks who don't steal? Is that what changed? Or you just have to camouflage your stealing? we will be so much better if the government can take another 1.3%. Everything will be fair. Joke. It's a freaking joke. That said, it is runoff election day here in the brand new district, too. Whether you're a Democrat or Republican, get out there. Your vote will probably make a difference. A low turnout expected. So if you surprise the folks putting out those projections and expectations, your vote could end up mattering a lot more than a normal election. So get out there and vote if you're so interested. Again, 272-9228. Let's go to the phones. You're on there. Who's this? Bob. Hey, Bob, how you doing? And how disgusting, Joey. When the legislature put out the sales tax reduction on groceries, mm -hmm. Millbrook, Alabama, right before it went into effect, and of course they, they under, read the law and understood, <clears throat> they dropped a quarter percent on groceries, but... They went up a 1% on everything else. So actually, you see what the people lost. They lost uh, the 1% on everything. So really, the whole effect of what the legislature was trying to do on groceries was negated heavily. I mean, it's yep. just <laughs> insane. And what's crazy, they didn't need the money. Right. It's just... Uh, well, I mean, but here's the deal. You can always ask, a, like, hey, Bob, do you want, like, 20 bucks? It's like, right now? <laughs> it's like, yes. Everybody will always accept, here's some more money. We just play off this fiction that taxes are some voluntary thing we all agreed to. No, you're literally stealing from folks. If money doesn't grow on trees. This is not a free lunch. You're taking it out of somebody else's paycheck. It's just, and it's, you know, it's simple economics when you start overspending and overprinting money that means your money is worthless every time you overprint it so you really didn't gain anything you lost right exactly simple economics y'all take care have a good one. appreciate it bob line three you're on there who's this joey hello it's wayne hey wayne how you doing 
Hey, I'm doing great. This, this conversation just just really lights the fire. Everybody needs to get on board with the fair tax. <laughs> Quit paying income tax until you buy something. You make $1,000 in the week, take home $1,000. Pay taxes when you buy something. It makes perfect sense. Well, I would love to get rid of the income tax. That uh, I think is one of the most heinous things that's happened. And, you know, it was sold as it's you, only be 1%, 2% on the uber wealthy. Yeah, okay. Have you have you read the fair tax? I, I remember the idea that's been, been pushed for a while. Uh, I think it's an interesting read the, read the book. Read the book. Joey, it's it's easy. It's easy. It's a paper base. It's the most researched bill ever ever produced. But it will take so much power away from the idiots in Congress. They mm -hmm. will, they will never pass it of their own accord. Yeah, I I think it's a, a reasonable change and a big one uh, that could probably get a lot done. It solves a lot of tariff problems. It solves a lot of like you're suggesting the loopholes and uh, well, Paula. Politicians didn't come up with it. Business people that were tired of paying extravagant amounts to their accountants to figure out the tax code every year engaged a bunch of experts to do the research to come up with a different approach. They actually thought that it would be they would end up with some type of flat tax, but the consensus was the fair tax was the best way to approach it, and ultimately the fairest way to approach it. And under that plan, every single person that buys something in the United States pays into the tax system. Today, I mean, I mean, people who visit here, tourists, underworld people, they, they skip all that. But if you buy something, you pay into the system. Well, uh, there you go. Appreciate it, Wayne. Hey, thanks, Joey. Again, that is uh, Wayne. I hadn't heard from him in a while. Hope you're doing all right, sir. We got to get a break. And again, Coleman Hughes, one of my favorite commentators out there in the world on all sorts of topics. Uh, he's great on the topic of race and politics and just race in general, but uh, he's also fantastic on music and uh, so many other philosophical pursuits one might uh, entertain. Coleman's, I think, a bright star rising as we speak. So we'll get to that clip in just a second. But first, this part of the program brought to you by Pest Pro Services. And they're Pest Pro Services, Ashley and that fantastic team. They're ready to help you out. And tis the season, folks. The mosquitoes are coming back with a vengeance. If you actually want to enjoy your backyard or, say, the front porch, well, you don't want to have to spray yourself with off or like the candles. You clearly can't get tiki torches anymore. We all know what that means. Why not have Pest Pro come out, treat your yard, and you're going to be mosquito-free. Even if you got that sweet meat that the little mosquitoes love, no, Pest Pro will take care of them. Then, of course, also with it getting a little hotter, a little more wet outside, termites will be coming back. So will fire ants. Wasp will be coming alive. All these critters that you realize were dormant during the winter, they're coming back. So if you need some, like, emergency problem fixed, or you're just looking to do some basic preventative maintenance, Pest Pro Services is the place to call. You might as well make them your everyday pest control company. That number, 265-9990. That's 265-9990. Or you can always go to ppsriverregion.com or just search Pest Pro Services on the Book of Faces. When you want to know, call a pro, Pest Pro Services. And be sure to tell Ashley, that great team, that Joey, that fell on the radio, sent you. He may not know whether he's coming or going. But whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings, 6 till 9, and afternoons, 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Hi, this is Bo Goodson from the Goodson Group. Selling a home in the River Region in this market takes some planning and preparation to be successful. Here are some steps to take to get your home sold fast. Remember the five Ps. Prepare the home. Fresh coat of paint inside and out and complete any repairs needed. Professionally clean the home. A deep cleaning of floors, cabinets, windows, and blinds will leave a great impression for future buyers. Provide a home warranty for the buyer to give the buyer peace of mind after the closing. Provide a closing cost allowance for the buyer. 
to help them be able to afford your home. Price your home to sell, not sit. A comparative market analysis from a local realtor will demonstrate what other properties have sold for in your neighborhood. Well-priced homes sell faster with less hassle. Houses are selling fast and sellers are getting top dollar. For all the answers, call Bo Goodson at the Goodson Group, 221-2883 or 551-0225. Honey, I got my bonus check today. That's great, sweetheart. Let's book that Hawaiian vacation right now. Actually, I was thinking more like an electrical upgrade for our house. What? It's not all that glamorous, but updating your home's electrical system is a great investment, enhancing its value and your safety. The panel and wiring in most older homes were not designed to meet modern demands. The experts at Crosby Electric can update your system to give you peace of mind. Sorry, honey, but I just want to feel safe in my own home. <laughs> Faulty wiring and electrical equipment are among leading causes of most home fires. Crosby Electric will make sure your panel, meter, circuit breaker, and receptacles are up to date. I can just see us lying on the beach at Waikiki. And I can see us lying in our own bed, knowing we're safe. Okay, but next year... I'll dance the hula in a grass skirt. All right. Sleep well, with no electrical worries. For a free home assessment, visit CrosbyElectric.com. Hey guys, are you looking for a professional and reliable tree service company in the Montgomery and surrounding areas? Well, check out the folks at Tree Masters. It's a name you know and trust. From pruning to full tree removal, they'll even help you remove your shrubs. They service all of central Alabama, including Lake Martin and Lake Jordan. Call them for a free quote today at 334-676-3638. That's 334-676-3638. Tree Masters. Taking on your backyard... Steel is ready to help in your pursuit of the perfect cut with our full line of zero-turn mowers and low-interest financing. Real Steel. Join the pursuit at steeldealers.com. Visit Dietzful Ace Hardware, your only steel dealer in the area. Folks, uh, especially here in the Montgomery area, an Amber Alert just went out, I'm sure you noticed. Uh, but this Amber Alert says, Caden Perryman, five-year-old black male abducted. Abductor is believed to be 13-year-old driving a white 2011 Chevrolet Equinox. Last seen near Gibbs Village in Montgomery. Direction of travel is unknown at this time. So if you see a kind of 2011-era Chevrolet Equinox, five-year-old abducted by 13-year-old. <sighs> Please report it to authorities. We'll be right back. Join Jones Drugs on Saturday, April 27th from 10 to 2 as they partner with the police department for the National DEA Drug Take Back event. Come by the parking lot of the Bradfield, Millbrook, Montgomery, or Phoenix City location and bring your unwanted, unneeded, or expired prescriptions. That's Saturday, April 27th, 10 to 2. For too long, Alabama's statewide news companies have shamed us for our conservative Christian values. Alabama deserves a news company that cherishes our culture, a company that isn't bought and paid for by the powers that be. 1819 News is that company, run by Alabamians for Alabamians. 1819 News celebrates what is good and beautiful about our state while exposing those who work against our values in secret. Just go to 1819news.com to learn more. Subscribe to our newsletter. That's 1819news.com. Hi, this is Carl Schmidt, naturopath and owner of The Herb Shop. Listen every Saturday to Winning Wellness and learn from experts in different fields of science and technology how nutritional supplements can help you. Listen to Winning Wellness every Saturday at 10 a.m. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. Live, local talk, the River Region's most trusted voice for news and opinion. News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Food, we got no jobs, our pets' heads are falling off! Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views in the afternoon. 272-9228 if you want to join in on the fun, if you could call it that. Now, as promised, I believe this is firing line with Margaret Hoover is her name, I believe. 
She's sitting down once again, one of my favorite commentators in the world right now. That's Coleman Hughes. And uh, this bodes to be a pretty good snippet of their conversation. Let's listen in together. A lot of your work and also the work in the book um, debunks or, or argues against arguments that Robin D'Angelo, Abram X. Kendi have posited in their um, arguments for anti-racism. Mm -hmm. You label them neo-racists. Mm -hmm. What is a neo-racist? Yeah, so they've billed themselves as anti-racists. And in my view, their philosophy is straightforwardly racist according to the definition of racism used by the civil rights movement. Martin Luther King in his final book defined racism as a doctrine of congenital inferiority of a people. He took it for granted that all groups of people could be racist. More than once in his life, he said that black supremacy would be equally evil as white supremacy. So applying that definition to someone like Robin D'Angelo, who says in her book, I strive to be less white and by be less white, I mean be less ignorant. Okay, so that, that is a straightforward claim that whiteness equals ignorance. I mean, that is racist according to my definition of racism. Let, let's just, uh, let's call a spade a spade here and call out racism when we see it. Um, in response to calls for colorblindness, Kendi writes, the moment we stop identifying by race is the moment we cannot see racial inequality. Goodness the moment gracious. we can't see racism is the moment racism and white domination becomes eternal. So what do you say to this argument that prioritizing colorblindness puts racial progress at risk? No, I, I think it's, it's precisely backwards. The difference between me and Kendi is that his definition of racism, which is extremely radical, is that if black people are 13% of the population and white people are, say, 60%, Black people should be 13% of every possible domain of value in American society. 13% of cops, 13% of teachers, 13% of wealth, 13% of prisoners, and on and on and on. Um, and likewise, white people should be 60% of everything. I think that's an absurd and, and really dangerous definition of racism because what it justifies is a kind of top-down um, heavy-handed manipulation uh, of policies to discriminate against one race and discriminate in favor of another race until the end of time, until this mythical moment where we get to equal outcomes, which will never, ever, ever happen. Right. Exactly right. And uh, that's just a little taste of that, I think, full interview with Coleman Hughes. But he's absolutely correct. Well, and it's the same problem uh, hardcore communists and socialists made in bygone eras. And uh, again, this is just essentially race Marxism. But equality, if that's your like eternal goal, and by equality, we mean like equal outcomes in a particular proportional way, it, you'll never get it. Because what usually ends up happening, in fact, there were members of Congress wanting to create essentially a racial equity department in the federal government. It would give immense power to certain people to make things fair for everybody else. It's the basic plot of George Orwell's Animal Farm. That all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. And those who are more equal will then continue to arbitrarily change the rules as they grope towards an ideal that will never be realized. So the revolution will never be over. Your little petty inconveniences things that you worry about, like freedom, free speech, like being able to buy and sell as you wish, be able to think what you want, to go unmolested by government thugs throughout your life. These are petty bourgeois conveniences or white false consciousness where that needs to be done away with. Your ignorance needs to be done away with, and we need to redistribute wealth in an equal and equitable fashion for all. But again, everybody spouting that will have immensely unequal powers to reign over everybody else. And there's the rub.
think sadly, though it's just reality, maybe it's not that sad, the rule is inequality in this world. And you can try to grope towards equality before the law. You can try to have a pure rule of law where it isn't the whims, the arbitrary whims of men that controls you on the basis of race or anything else. But when you start saying the law needs to be used as a bloody axe to hew through every problem society has, and you say, in fact, we need to make the law treat people unequally to create equal outcomes, enter a space where there is no final state. It's just a blank check to do whatever the hell you want. Instead, I think we should embrace inequality. And men are better or worse based on their own character, their own individual character, their own individual merits. But they provide. It's not based on their intelligence. Certainly, sure as hell, not based on their race or their sex. Not because you're part of the right political party, yada, yada, yada. No, men are better or worse. People are unequal based on their actual shaping of themselves. At least that's what I believe. And yet you will hear charlatans from the left and the right tell you that you must get on board with the latest thing. And you know what? There are some people that love it. Some people who love their shackles, who love being told what to do and be part of something that they're not necessarily responsible for, but they're a part of. Instead, when you tell folks, no, you are responsible for your life. No matter what oppression, what indignity or injustice is thrown your way, you're still responsible for your own life. And it takes an amazing ability to say, you know what, that person's better than me. Or maybe if I think I'm better than that person, I'll still show them honor and dignity. That's the kicker, folks. Even in trying to find equality in this world, you just end up recreating the hierarchy. You strive for equality and you end up making things unequal. Sort of the problem that always bedevils us. So I appreciate somebody as young as a Coleman Hughes pointing out that there might be this thing called individual dignity. And that human dignity can be achieved, even in the worst of situations. And human dignity cannot be reduced down to, let's check to see, uh, like, how many people are in this profession? How, what's the wealth distribution in the society? That's a heck of a way to treat people. You're not treating them like human beings with dignity. You're treating them like insects to be collected and organized, like a fish tank. And if that's what justice is, well, I don't want any part of it. Consider me on the side of the devil, if that's what justice is. 272-9228. You want to get in on the program? Hey, we got another break. But this part of the program, before we hit the break, brought to you by Bo Goodson and the Goodson Group. And there at the Goodson Group, well, Bo has been helping folks here in the River Region real estate market, helping buyers and sellers for over 40 years, getting close to 50, four plus decades there at the Goodson Group. They've been working here in the River Region real estate market. And then at the Goodson Group, not only can they help you with buying or selling a home, and you especially need their expertise in a market like this, they also have uh, management services available should you want to rent out your home. It's a great idea here in this market to invest in a rental or to convert one home you have into a rental. But it can be a pain in the butt to manage it yourself, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Why not for a reasonable fee have the Goodson Group do it for you? And then the Gertzen Group is also home of the Bogutson Real Estate School. This is the crown jewel there, one of the most highly acclaimed real estate programs in the state of Alabama because of, well, all the success. There have been so many folks who have graduated from Bo's class. It meets every Thursday night still. Again, a very reasonable fee to sign up for the course. And a lot of folks who have gone through that course, graduated, become licensed realtors or just more knowledgeable private players. And they found success here in the River Region. Uh, but throughout the state and people throughout the country, Bo Goodson is just that good. You can learn directly from him. So check him out today. You can always go to thegoodsongroup.com or give him a call at 551-0225. That's 551-0225. Bo Goodson and the Goodson Group. Great sponsor here of News and Views 
in the afternoon. Want to carry News Talk in your pocket? Download the News Talk 93.1 app from the App Store. Available on iPhone and Android. Never miss a moment. Download now. Hi there, I'm Madeline Cannon with Alabama Home Mortgage. Getting pre-approved is the first step towards home ownership. People are often scared or nervous about taking that first step, but I'll tell you, it's nothing to be scared of. At Alabama Home Mortgage, we will take the first step and every step along the way with you. Call us at 567-4223. We will gather the information needed to tell you exactly what you qualify for. After a call to Alabama Home Mortgage, you will know what price point to shop for, what down payment is required, if any, and what your monthly mortgage payment will look like. We take all the guessing out of it. Then when you find the house you want to make your home, you are ready to make an offer. Along with your offer, you will submit your Alabama Home Mortgage pre-approval letter. This shows sellers that you've already taken the steps necessary to ensure that you qualify to purchase their home. Wait no longer, it's time to take that first step together. Call me at 567-4223 or start the process online at MyAlabamaHomeMortgage.com. That's Alabama Home Mortgage because, folks, there is a difference in mortgage companies. NMLS 1586 8 Equal Housing Lender. What's your biggest investment? More than likely, it's your home. So treat it that way when you hire a painting contractor. With PBS Painting, there are no gimmicks, no $99 specials. Just quality painting and someone who treats your home with the same respect that you do. At PBS Painting, we have been painting for years and look forward to many more years to come. With PBS Painting, the job gets prepped properly, whether it's cleaning, scraping, or priming. We always use quality products, which is a must for a quality paint job. So if you're looking for a painter that doesn't need upfront money and is on the job at all times, then please give me a call. Scott Bowers and PBS Painting, 294-5122. That's PBS Painting, 294-5122. Look at some of our work on Facebook at PBS Painting Montgomery. Hello to all my friends in the great state of Alabama. This is Lee Greenwood, and I'm deeply honored to extend my wholehearted endorsement to a true American patriot, Dick Brubaker, for Congress. His proven track record of principled advocacy Effective leadership and dedicated public service guarantees that he will always stand firm in defense of our rights, our values, and our future. God bless you in Alabama, and God bless the USA. I'm Dick Brubaker, and I approve this ad. The Health and Wealth Show. The Health and Wealth Show. The show so nice, we said it twice. Weekday evenings at 6 on News Talk 93.1 WACV. The Health Wake it up, son. Joke's over, hey? This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. Rich Thomas Weather brought to you by Clark Heating, Air, and Plumbing. It's time to get your cooling system ready for the long, hot summer. Call today about the advantages of the Clark Club membership to be sure you're covered. Call 277-2125. Better call Clark. Alabama certification number 09098. Well, hi, everybody. Our very warm mid-April pattern continues. Even the nights are mild. With cloudy skies tonight, overnight low temperature down to about 66. Tomorrow, I think most of us stay dry despite a weakening front approaching. High 82, mostly cloudy skies. Thursday, a little warmer, high 86 with the sun and cloud mix. Then widely scattered showers probably holding off till Friday and Saturday. A better chance of showers and thunderstorms on Sunday. From the Blue Water Weather Center, this is Rich Thomas. John Bobo with Capital Tractor. Spring is time for clearing and cleaning. Time to clean out your shed too. Let go of old, outdated equipment holding you back and visit Capital Tractor to see your property's full potential. Powering Alabama, Capital Tractor, Montgomery, Brundage, and Greenville. The River Region's News Talk Station. News Talk 93.1, WACV. News Talk 93.1. Joey Clark. Welcome back. Now, I want to change up here and go to somebody who I think is a true rising star within the freshman class there in the United States Senate. It's a man. And that man is J.D. Vance of Ohio. 
I think this is a guy who is truly America first. He's a guy who I think truly understands the moment we live in as a nation. And that's why I want to go to him, making the case for, well, actually getting our own house in order instead of continuing to fund more and more wars abroad with money we don't have to accomplish what exactly? So without further ado, here's J.D. Vance talking to, uh, let's hope it's not Jake Tapper, probably is it's CNN State of the Union. Let's uh, listen in together, folks. What Fetterman might say were he here is he fe- uh, that uh, Putin was getting a lot of things that he wanted out of Donald Trump, so he didn't need to be as hostile. Donald Trump was clearly more friendly to him uh, than other presidents have been one way or the other, but also uh, Donald Trump was more hostile to, to NATO. I, I don't but, think that's right, Jake. I, I, what, what I think Donald Trump did is he engaged in strategic deterrence. You have to negotiate sometimes even with bad people, even with your enemies, but you have to deter those people. And if you engage in smart deterrence like Donald Trump did, he doesn't invade countries like Ukraine. So I don't buy that argument, but uh, I, I, I understand why Democrats repeat that talking point. Well, let me ask you about Ukraine. Um, sure. Because you wrote an op-ed in the New York Times uh, saying that you don't think it makes sense, the, the, the Biden pitch for, for aid to Ukraine. You've been accused of, of appeasement. You've been sure. accused of surrender. Even the National Review had a column about that. And again, I'm going to get to Iran and Israel, which I know is a big press. How many years have they been like, accusing their foreign policy opponents, the establishment there in Washington, as appeasement? Can we pull our head out of the ass of the 1930s? Let's continue on. Interesting story. But I, I do want you to address that because the National Review uh, is basically saying that your solution to the problem of Russia invading a sovereign nation, Ukraine, is National to just Review, surrender. What a joke. Are they wrong? No, look, my solution to the problem is to rebuild our own country. The reason that we're in this position, Jake, is because we're stretched way too thin. We're stretched way too thin. And the number of weapon systems that we need, the Ukraine needs, that Taiwan needs, that Israel needs, and we can't do all of these things at once. So when you're stretched too thin, you've got to focus and you've got to rebuild your own country. Let's take just one of those weapon systems that we're talking about, 155 millimeter artillery shells. The Russians currently have a five to one advantage over the Ukrainians. The Israelis will need this stuff. The Taiwanese need this stuff. And of course, America needs this stuff. Can we possibly fight all of those conflicts at once? No, the math just doesn't make sense. So what we should be doing is with Ukraine, encouraging them to take a defensive posture, not these disastrous counteroffensive the Biden administration has been promoting. The counteroffensive is within Ukraine, though. The counteroffensive is within Ukraine. They're not it's seeking sudden. land from Russia. And in fact, just no, today... I, I, I'm not just, passing judgment on the morality of what they're doing. Of yeah. course, it's their territory, Jake, but you have to acknowledge military reality on the ground. If they're going to waste a ton of money, a ton of lives, and a ton of ammunition on a counteroffensive strategy, but a defensive strategy might actually work, we've got to choose the strategy that might actually work. But the counteroffensive is with, strategy. is within Ukrainian territory. Just today, uh, Zelensky was suggesting that the strike by Iran on Israel should serve as a wake-up call uh, in terms of this greater battle, and maybe you disagree with people who see it this way, between uh, autocracies uh, and democracies, Israel being a democracy, as is Ukraine, uh, Iran, and Russia being... Wait, but what point is Jake Tapper making here? Well, but the, but the counteroffenses were inside you. Yeah, we know you, dope. How'd those work out? How did that summer offensive work out? It didn't work out well. But we've got to do it because it's the morally right thing to do. That's, I guess, all the only time we bring that up is during foreign policy. Damn the actual result that you're getting. But I think J.D. Vance is holding his own quite well. Keep going, J.D. Autocracies. What do, you, what do you say to that? Well, I think foreign policy is not a nursery rhyme, and it should serve as a wake-up call, but it should serve as a wake-up call that we have to rebuild our own industrial base. Let's take another weapon system that's really important. The Patriot Interceptor System definitely, almost definitely, saved a lot of Israeli lives last night. The Ukrainians want thousands of those per year. Do you know how many we manufacture in a year, Jake? 550. Mm. We cannot possibly, I've repeated this for years now, we cannot possibly support Ukraine and Israel and our own defense needs in the way that these guys demand. So I think we should focus. I think Israel is a much closer ally, is a much more core American national security interest. And of course, we've got to focus on ourselves 
That means encouraging the Ukrainians to take a defensive strategy. Uh, I, this is really important, Jake, because you're going to hear a lot of calls across Washington, D.C., that we now have to pass this supplemental. Right. But if we pass the Ukraine and Israel supplemental and send a ton of weapons to Ukraine that the Israelis need, we're actually weakening Israel in the name of helping them. It doesn't make any sense. Well, the supplemental is mathematical reality. The supplemental, which your leader, Senator McConnell, has called on the House to pass, the supplemental contains money for Israel and Ukraine and Taiwan. So it's not a question of either or, it's a question of both. I think it is a question of either or, Jake, because it's not about the money again, it's about the weapons. If we pass the supplemental, we go from making 550 Patriot interceptors to 650. That's 100 more, and the world needs thousands of these things. So really, it goes back to the basic math of this. If you don't make enough weapons to fight three wars, you've got to figure out how to focus. And my proposal is we focus on ourselves and we focus on our closest allies. So let's talk about no, I'm done with Jake Tapper. That, that's enough from Jake. Man, the corporate press really is miserable. I don't know why I do this to myself, but I think J.D. Vance did a great job holding his own. Good job, J.D. But this is what they always do. They bring it back to, isn't it the morally right thing? It's like, it's not morally right to be practically wrong. It's not right at all. And getting tens of thousands of people dead to accomplish what again is not exactly a great moral posture. Gotta love the government. They're always like sacrifice on our behalf. Well, on behalf of your country. Not it's not us you're sacrificing for. It's uh it's the country that you love so much. Uh-huh, is it? I've got a feeling a lot of the stuff you've got people to sign up for when they join the armed forces thinking like I'm gonna do like dad did and my grandfather did before me because I love this country and I love the values it stands for and then you send them on a ride that doesn't defend the values of this country that in fact impoverishes this country puts this country in a worse position than we've been I think in our entire history and by the way gets a lot of people rich and ain't the folks putting on the uniform and going to the front lines. But, you know, we're the indisputable, uh, indispensable. Uh, in, you know, we, we, we're good, guys. We won the Cold War, right, man, right? Uh-huh. Well, the Cold War ended over 40 years ago. And look where we are now under the current leadership. Just don't buy it. And I appreciate voices like J.D. Vance trying to engage and make the arguments with more of your corporate establishment types. We'll see if the needle starts moving in the other direction. How about this? Uh, let me hit a very, well, let me go to line one first. Hey, you're on there. Who's this? That's just Sparky. Hey, man. All things considered, how do we know where the money goes when we give it to the Ukraine? We trust them that much, and we're worried about their border and the hell with ours? Well, and a, when are we gonna, a lot of this is money will not even go overseas. It'll be plowed into military contractors here at home. So that's, I mean, and then some stuff will be sent over to Ukraine. And yeah, the, is there a very robust way to inspect where everything is? It's all been accounted for? Of course not. It doesn't exist. Yeah. And, and money? Who's got money? Right. We don't. And, and the more we give to these other people, the weaker we are. We're, we're just aching to be taken. I'm, exactly right. I, 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 thanks, Joey. Appreciate it. Got to love hearing from Sparky. Got to hit a break. But first, this part of the program brought to you by uh, Josh and Leslie Ryder there at Dylan Rings. And again, go by 119 Brown Springs Road. See that brand new showroom. It looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, the remodel they've done over there. And right now, if you go to their Facebook page, you can check out some of uh, Josh Ryder's custom-designed jewelry. They have a custom jewelry studio there at Dillon Rings. Uh, this one piece I'm looking at is just absolutely gorgeous. Now, it could be you inherited something, and of course you want to hold on to it as a keepsake, but you want to update the sense of fashion, its sense of style for a more modern taste. Well, Josh Ryder can do that. Or maybe you have multiple pieces of jewelry you inherited. You're not always going to wear them. You can actually combine multiple pieces of jewelry 
uh, make it a everyday wearing sort of thing. Or it could be you had a dream and you want to create something that's more poignant to remember a loved one you lost or celebrate your own, say, birth and becoming a mother or a father. Or it could be uh, you want to have some fun and you want to have some funky fresh medallions made to go out on the town and you know live your best life or something like that. Uh, whatever the reason, Josh Ryder can make your dream a reality when it comes to custom-made jewelry. So check them out today. You can always go to DylanRings.com or again, go to the Book of Faces or just search out Instagram for Dylan Rings. But I really encourage you to, again, stop by that brand new showroom, 119 Round Springs Road right here in Montgomery, just off of Atlanta Highway. And be sure to tell them that that Joey fella, that idiot on the radio sent you. He may not know whether he's coming or going. But whether you're going to work or coming home, Greg Budell is there. Mornings, 6 till 9, and afternoons, 3 till 6. Only on News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. This is Mike Costanza with Chappie's Deli. And Jeff Branca with Chappie's Deli. Mike, let's talk soup. Our homemade chicken and rice soup. Miss Dolly's recipe, it's so good. But especially when the weather changes, come to any Chappie's Deli location and get Miss Dolly's homemade chicken and rice soup. This hour of news and views is brought to you by our good friends at Cole Plumbing, 279-8919. Cole Plumbing is number one in the number two business. You don't have to dig a hole. They have proprietary pipelining technology. Ask them about their tankless water heaters. Remember, when you have trouble with your bowl, call on Cole. Live local talk, the River Region's only 24-hour News Talk FM station. News Talk 93.1 FM, WACV. Joey Clark. Welcome back to News and Views in the Afternoon. I'm Joey. I missed Eddie today, but I appreciate all the guests stopping by early in the show over the stream. And, uh, well, I've been trying to get a hold of Ray Bowles here with Private Carpet, but it, it's going to voicemail, which I think means he's busy, which is a good thing. Those guys there, Prattville Carpet folks, they're always working and working hard. They'll literally go the extra mile for a free in-home measurement. Now, why would you want to call up 285-8117 and say, hey, ask me, I, I, Joey told me to ask you about the free in-home measurement? Because when well, they come to you and do that measurement, maybe you're looking to re-carpet the bedroom or the living room. Maybe you want to put hardwood down in the hallway. Uh, it could be you want to redo the kitchen or the bathroom uh, with ceramic tile. They'll stop by, they'll measure the area that you're looking to resurface. And that way, once you pick out the product you want to use, and again, they can bring samples to you of all their many different products from traditional hardwood, carpet, laminate products, luxury vinyl plank, ceramic tile. Once you pick out exactly what you want, they'll know what's going to cost, what it's going to take to get the job done. And well, once you pull the trigger, it will be so. It will be done. So again, that number for Prattville Carpet, 285-8117. And when you call 285-8117, be sure to tell them that that Joey fella on the radio sent you. Again, uh, 272 9228 if you want to get some parting shots in. Trying to think about, do we learn anything today? Yeah, not really. It's kind of more of the same. We learned that there's always more folks looking to up taxes here in the state of Alabama. Uh, we've learned that, well, there's mayhem in the Congress, and Mike Johnson is not exactly secure in his seat. We've uh, learned that Donald Trump is this judge in the Stormy Daniels case, which is an absurd case, that in the Stormy Daniels case, this judge is saying, no, you don't, you got to be here. You can't go to your son's graduation. No, you got to be here. You can't go to a Supreme Court hearing on presidential immunity that's coming up. You have to be right here for this very serious case where you didn't do your books right. And we came up with all sorts of cockamamie laws in order to go after you. Anyway. 
We learned that today, but we kind of already knew that, right? We learned that, uh, well, Thomas Massey has a big old pair on him going after Mike Johnson, and he's not backing down. We learned that J.D. Vance is a great rising star in the freshman class there up in the United States Senate. And uh, we learned that, well, the Libertarians are trying to ask for your vote again this year. Will you consider them? Well, considering how everything's going, who knows? What a weird year this has been so far, and we've only just begun. Let's go to line three. You're on there. Who's this? Hey, it's Ray. I missed your call. Hey, hey, well, I, I just did the ad, but I still like talking okay, to you. Good. But, but how you doing today? Good, good. I was talking to customers. Oh, I missed my ad. Let me go do my ad. And then, <laughs> yeah, y'all took care of it. So, as always, thank y'all much. You need a full call me. And I am so ready for November. Who's ready for November? Yeah. Well, we'll get a little reprieve here after runoff day uh, from too many candidates stopping by. But, uh, yeah, about summertime, summer, summer, summertime, it's going to get uh, hot and heavy. And I mean, politically speaking. And, and we get the Canyons on top of it this year. You get the what? I'm nervous it'll be the Canyon Buds. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. 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 I get those in just a few weeks. Yeah. Do you eat what those you things? Cicadas. Uh, Terry does. <laughs> Cicadas. I can't Cicadas? say that. Cicadas? Probably dyslexic and try to pronounce that. I knew what you meant, but uh, the big buzz, uh, yeah. they make a lot of noise. Yeah. yeah. Well, Terry says it's a delicacy of Scotland, so he's collected as many as he can find. <laughs> you fry them? I, I don't know what he does with them, but once he cooks them up, we'll bring you some. How about that? Okay. I mean, actually, don't don't break your back to come bring me those. But... <laughs> yeah, we'll bring you some, Joey. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Guys, y'all have a great day. You too, Ray. And, uh, well, I'm pretty much out of time here. Y'all stay tuned. Happy hour with Greg Budell. Well, he's next. We'll, we'll all find out together how happy he is indeed. Broadcasting from the Riverside Chevrolet Master Control Center, this is WACV Kusada, News Talk 93.1 FM. When it's Chevy, it's Riverside. It's since an SRH.